Yes. Yes, I did. I know where it came from. You Peter. I get it where I want it. Excuse me. Excuse me. Peter. Sorry. Okay, Peter. We need to talk. Okay, we're going to uh, call a meeting to order and we're going into closed session. A conference with legal counsel, anticipated litigation. Um, there is public here, so I'll read the whole thing. Um, government code section 54956.9D 2E1. Number of cases, one significant exposure to litigation in the opinion of the Board of Directors on the advice of legal counsel based on facts and circumstances that might result in litigation against the IWVGA, which are not yet known to a potential plaintiff or plaintiffs, which facts and circumstances need to be disclosed, need to be not disclosed. So. We're going into closed session. We'll be back. The meeting is scheduled to begin at 11. I promise we'll be back by then. Ma Madam Mayor? Yes. Uh, just to remind you that uh, we need to solicit uh, public comment before the closed session. Okay. The public has a right to comment before okay. all is items there including any, the closed thank session. Thank you, sir. Is there any uh, public comment? Thank you. Okay. All right, then we will go into um, cl closed session. Thank you. Order, please. Please take your seats. Can we call the meeting to order, please, everyone? The meeting's called to order. Okay, uh, we are going to um, give a report from closed session and after roll call. I'm going to call the roll then, unless Lauren, would you call roll? Yeah, you make her speak. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Bob Harrington? Here. Nick Gleason? Here. Peggy Here. Peter Brown? Here. Bob Page? Here. Thank you. Now we will have the report. Do you, you want that before session. or after the Pledge of Allegiance? Do we have that pledge open session? Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> pledge of Allegiance. Um, who? Pardon me? Okay. Nick's going to lead, lead us in the pledge, please. Salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for just a few minutes while we uh, remember why we're here and how we got here. Thank you. Okay. Didn't give you much time to remember. Remember, remember. Okay, so Keith, when did you want us to put in? Why don't we just do that right now? All right, thank you. So I'll give a quick report out of closed session. The board met in closed session to discuss um, Anticipated litigation uh, for an undisclosed item. Uh, the board received a report from a district council. No action was taken on that item, Madam, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay, we're going to go into public comments. This time is reserved for public to address the board on items not on the agenda. No action will be taken on, on non-agenda items unless authorized by law. Comments are limited to three minutes per person. Is there anyone who would like to make? Thank you. Good morning. My name is Nick Panzer. I speak today as an interested party, not <coughs> as a member of your policy advisory committee. I received from your secretary on January 4 a white paper that proposes a strategy to manage water in the Indian Wells Valley. I believe that the California Department of Water Resources will flatly reject that strategy for at least seven reasons, which I list out, spell out on the paper that I believe is before you. I've left several copies out at the front door, and I've left several copies with your secretary in case anyone else has an interest. 
Um, as this paper has been discussed in the press, uh, I respectfully request that it, you distribute it to your interested parties list and that you make it available to the general public by attachment to your minutes and by inclusion on your website. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Is there any others? Um, Madam Chair, can I just clarify something? The white paper to which he speaks, that is not a groundwater authority document, correct? That is correct. Okay. It was distributed. He is correct. But it's not produced by the groundwater authority. It's not our, not our, not our work product. Thank you. That, that is correct. Hi, my name is Sophia Merck, and I would like to encourage more transparency according to the Groundwater Sustainability Act. When you go to the website, it's, you can't get all the things that you need to get. Right now, I'm having to um, obtain a lot of my information from a different area, even though I'm a resident of this of this of Indian Wells Valley. Um, I live in the county. I'm a water hauler. I also have a business in town. But I would encourage more transparency, and I would also like to see some of the reports that were up on the groundwater, the old groundwater group that used to meet. I would like to see some of those reports being put up on the Kern County website. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Hi, Carol Wilson. Um, I'm an interested party. I understood uh, just now that that white paper was not produced by the Groundwater Authority. I would like to know, please, who produced it? Thank you. We'll answer the questions after we've gotten all of our oh. comments. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Renee Westerlusk, I am a member of the Policy Advisory Committee, and I just want some guidance here. There was an issue about having. Uh, Renee, can you get closer to the. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Renee Westerlusk, I am a member of the Policy Advisory Committee. I just want some guidance. Um, we had problems getting the meeting for the PAC and the TAC posted on the county website because the county was out. Um, was closed down as uh, described in the Bakersfield, Californian, uh, December 21st, and our meeting was on January 4th. And there's another holiday coming up, like in July, and we have a meeting right after the 4th of July, so I don't know if it's going to affect that. And then what about next, uh, what is it, December holidays? Will it affect that again? Um, there needs to be some guidance. Um, is it imperative that it has to be posted on the county website uh, to s satisfy the Brown Act requirements? Or if is it optional? I um, think that needs to be addressed. And then I, I've been having trouble f trying to find the Indian Wells Valley Groundwater Authority on the county website. I went yesterday, and I couldn't. Even I went to the search box, and all it had was articles. I couldn't find where you can get agendas and meetings on the county website. So I'd like some steps how to get there. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any others? Okay, uh, staff, do you want to address some of those questions? Would you? Well, I, on the, the topic of the white paper, I... We, we didn't produce the white paper. It was produced, as I understand it, by some private pumpers, um, and I don't know who was involved in that. The, the paper, I guess, will list off some parties, but I guess it speaks for itself. It, again, not a product, not our work product. We were not involved. Okay. Ron, did you want to say anything? I, I, I think Alan was going to come oh, up. Oh, I'm and, sorry. Go ahead. I didn't see you walk over. 
Madam Chairman, members of the board, um, I can answer some questions about the, the website, uh, although it's a legal question. I don't believe it's required by the Brown Act to be online. It's sort of uh, nowadays, it's customary. And uh, um, so we can, we can facilitate that pre pretty easily. Um, as far as finding the, the information from the website, I've got, I think I've got Renee's email. I can send her um, the link. Um, th th we have had times from, from time to time uh, people trying to do a search and not being able to find it. But uh, we, can, we can get you a link so you can get right on there. Was, did I get everything? Was there anything else on the website? My question is, is, is for this groundwater authority, um, what is the main posting? Is it, is it our secretary posting it um, at the, the water district is because that's the home address for the authority? Or what's, what's the main posting under the Brown Act? That, that's exactly it. Uh, they'd be post, they'd post it. Our office is the groundwater authority's office. It's physically posted there. Um, and uh, any other posting we do online is customary, but it's not required for the Brown Act. So we do the, the physical posting uh, per the Brown Act. Um, with regard to um, holidays, maybe we can chat afterwards, and, and I can, uh, if we're not getting it there or we're not getting it on time, it's, it's the county's website at this point. It hasn't transitioned to private, so uh, we're happy to smooth out any rough edges. Thank you, sir. Don? Yeah, I, I can address the question regarding the white paper, the genesis of it, and some of the parties are here that were involved in the genesis of it, so if I speak incorrectly, they can correct me. Uh, it started with a meeting that Supervisor Gleason and uh, Director Peter Brown had with uh, Mojave Pistachio, and during that meeting there was assurances given by Mojave Pistachio that they wanted to protect the, the base at all costs. So the white paper was a thought that uh, was developed as a way of developing a concept, if you will. It's not a you know, anything in concrete, just something to generate discussion. So the consultant for Mojave Pistachio, Aqualogic, uh, drafted the initial white paper, and it was sent to some of the major pumpers in the basin for review and comment and to add to it. Uh, the water district received it. Our staff reviewed it uh, and consultant, and we added some comments to it. It was then given, I believe, to Coastal Operating Company. Uh, they contributed toward it. And of course, uh, went to Searles Valley Minerals. They contributed toward it. Um, uh, Meadowbrook Dairy contributed to it, comments. So all those comments went into the final draft that was distributed of the white paper. There was no the question that was raised a few times, why isn't there a name on it? We didn't want a single name on it because we felt that it should come from uh, not anybody that would be perceived to have an agenda, but it would come from many of the major pumpers in the basin as their, their idea of one approach to bringing the basin into sustainability. So that's where it came from and how it came about. I'm getting blank stares. <laughs> Please. Not to extend the discussion, but... Um, I think it was like a year and a half ago we had that discussion. This was when we were meeting with everybody to talk to them about, uh, you know, what do you guys think about all this stuff we're doing? Kind of get some early information on how people um, thought this might go. Uh, best way to deal with a problem is, or something you want to solve is to ask everybody what they think. So that's what we did. So they were informal meetings. We met with all the major pumpers. Uh, Mick and I drove around. I wish Mick would have drove and driven more than me, but um, anyways. So it was exactly that. The genesis was basically a letter of support that um, they, they wanted to guarantee because we were stressing in, in all of our meetings that the, the mission was critical of the base and we didn't want anything to interfere with that. And so it was their attempt, um, it was their uh, purpose was to say uh, we support that as well and we want to make sure that and can we put this in writing. We said, well, sure, go ahead. So that's how it started. Um, I would maybe change the term from a white paper because – let me can I let me jump. I apologize for jumping in, but I just want to point out the white paper is not on the agenda. Oh, okay. And uh, we, we're allowed to briefly respond to the public, uh, but I just caution to not turn this into an unnoticed agenda item. I guess I'm talking too much. So the, the my last comment before I'm, I'm hitting the head or something. 
Uh, I would like to use the word discussion paper, or just point, talking points, if we could do that for everybody, because that makes it sound better for me, too. Thank you. Excuse me, uh, Don. Did Kern County have any, any input in this paper? No. The city did not either. Okay. All right. That doesn't mean any of us are less important or others are more important. It means that those people got together and presented something. So thank you. All right. The next item is pre a special presentation, the USGR USGS recharge study. Who has that? Okay, staff, do we have a USGS recharge study? Yes, I'm, I'm being informed they're uh, online. Okay. Are you there? Do we want to go on a little bit until they get online? I'm online. Perfect. All right, please introduce yourselves and we will uh, listen with great interest. Hey, this is Lori Flint. I'm with the California Water Science Center. I've got uh, Dina Sala here and uh, other colleagues who are participating in the project. And our project is to estimate natural recharge in Indian Wells Valley. And this is a progress report. Project, project is up uh, end of next month. So we're coming down the final stretches. Can everybody see my slide? No. Oh. Could we put them up, staff? You say no. Do you have them? We don't have them. It's a WebEx. I talked to the IT guy just a few minutes ago, and he said he had it up on his computer. Do you have it up? OK, can you put that up? Thank you. <laughs> We'll let you know as soon as up if you want to continue talking briefly. Okay, so our objective were to uh, use an existing water balance model that we had calibrated to the state and use local data to locally calibrate this model in Indian Wells Valley to estimate natural recharge by constraining all components of the water balance. Uh, we've got a number of validation sources to increase confidence in these estimates. And our goal is to look at the, the historical and future patterns of natural recharge and evaporative demand in the valley. Do we have slides yet? We're getting an answer, I think. Um, Madam Mayor. Next slide is a map of Average annual wait, historical. Wait, wait just one minute, please. Sure. Uh, we have the WebEx up, but we're not seeing the slides. I am sharing. And it says I am sharing, active sharing. I've got my screen showing. What are you seeing? Yeah, we're just seeing a white screen. Oh, maybe that's. No, this has got the red boundary on it. You see anything but just a blank white screen? Yeah, I believe we're going to restart it. Just give us a second. All right. I'll be patient. Okay, I'm going to uh, go to the consent calendar, and then we will come back to this. Okay. Uh, the consent calendar is items that are um, maybe removed by um, by the board if they want to discuss it. Otherwise, we'll entertain a motion to approve. Madam Chairman, I had a, I had a question actually. Um, regarding the um, item B, regarding expenditures, um, and this may be something that staff provides later under the review of the budget, but um, I had a question as to, I know those expenditures, both the USGS um, quarterly billing, as well as portions of the, the USGS um, billings are ultimately covered by the distressed counties grant that um, Kern County receives. So Kern, my understanding is Kern County advances 
the payment, and then they submit reimbursement to the state under that grant. And that with the billings that we receive from the water resource manager from Stetson Engineers, that um, an evaluation is done on the, their billings and a portion is believed to be reimbursable under the Distress Counties grant and a portion comes out of our um, general fund, which is essentially currently um, the contributions that the member agencies have made of $15,000 each, and we last month approved an advancement agreement from the Water District. So I'm, I'm wondering, either in the, uh, the presentation that's coming later from staff on the budget or now, is there a way to understand exactly how much is left in the general fund currently after we pay these bills? Ron, can you uh, address that? That was your budget item. Do you want to address it in your item? Actually, uh, Alan will be uh, okay. making the presentation on that later on on the agenda. Okay. Is that okay with you, Mr. Page? Yeah, as long as it happens today in front of the public, that would be great. Okay. All right. Is there a motion to approve item uh, A and B? Uh, do we need public comment on the consent agenda? Is there any public who'd like to make comment? Thank you. All right, now a motion. I'll make a motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Abstain. Okay. All right, I understand we're up now, so we will go back to the special, special presentation. Thank you very much. We're ready for you. Okay, are you looking at a map? Yep. yep. Okay, this is a this is the Indian Wells Valley uh, model domain in blue, and we've divided this into multiple sub basins just for reporting purposes, so that we can look at places where it's a little bit more or less recharged, and be able to discuss how things differ across the basin. This is our current our final draft estimate of recharge for 1981 through 2010, and you can see that there is. Uh, more recharge on the western side where the Sierras uh, occur, where we have um, more rainfall and snow melt. There is uh, very little recharge on the Indian Wells Valley floor on an average annual basis, and you get some recharge throughout the Coastal and Argus range. There's also um, a fair amount of recharge in the volcanics, which happen to be permeable, but the reason that there's um, a lot of uh, Recharge right there is because there's uh, no vegetation. It's actually mapped as barren vegetation. So there's very little, so there's not very much evapotranspiration. So keep in mind this is a water balance calculation. So if you have plants using water, you don't get recharge. So this is our average annual map. That being said, not all years are created equal. This is uh, annual from 1981 through 2015, the orange line is precipitation on the left axis, and the blue line is average annual is annual recharge, water year recharge on the right axis in acre feet. You can see that recharge responds very similarly to precipitation. Very wet years, you get a lot of recharge. Um, in 2005, I'll show you a map, you got up to 24,000 acre feet of recharge that year. But most years you get very little uh, recharge. The average annual historical mean that is shown in the dotted line uh, that goes from 1981 through 2010 is about um, 9,800 9, acre feet. If you look at the average for the last 15 years, then you only have about 6,500 acre feet. So there's quite a bit of difference depending on what period of record you look at. Uh, keep in mind when we talk about futures, we're going to do a future climate analysis here, and the future climates may actually serve the desert uh, quite well because in this case, we get a lot of recharge when there are uh, peak precipitation years. And while there may be more droughts in the future, there's also our, our analyses to date for the state of California shows that the, there is also more extreme climate years as well. So we get more wetter years while we also get more drier years. That may prove to actually enhance recharge in the long run, but you're going to have to wait till the next update to find that out. So I'm going to show you the uh, 20. 
the 2000 to 2013 average annual, there's a, a little bit less. You can see uh, just a little bit cooler colors there. And then a wet year, if you look at these now, consider this is the last 14 years and the same scale, and I'm, now you can see in a wet year how much more rain, how much more recharge we get. So a lot of recharge coming from the, from the uh, Sierra Nevada and more recharge coming from the Coso and Argus ranges and the volcanics. I'm going to show, this is a table of numbers now. I showed this table last, last uh, progress report. This is a compilation of all of the studies that we've been able to find and how they um, uh, estimated natural recharge. And then we have ours at the bottom. So our last estimate was uh, our statewide calibration, and we have a, had a total natural recharge estimate for the whole basin of five, about 5,000 acre feet. All these numbers are acre feet. Our 20, uh, 1981 through 2010 uh, historical estimate is 9583. And the, uh, the uh, more recent period, 2013, is about 6,500. This differs across the valley. You get more, um, more, drain, more recharge from the Sierra Nevada. You get a lot from the Coso, not as much from the Argo and El Paso and not very much on the valley floor itself. We divvy it up into the sub-basins that we've categorized. These are the basins that, we've, that we're look, categorizing for reporting purposes, and you can see what the mean recharge is. Now, these are um, draft numbers. They're likely to change slightly as we um, finalize our QA, QC, but this is pretty much what we've come up with. And the point here is that over time, all the different approaches have looked at estimating natural recharge using a, a variety of different methodologies, some of them using hydrogeology and some of them using groundwater models, um, lots of different methods throughout time. And there is a pretty good consensus, even given all those different methodologies. The difference in a lot of these numbers may have to do with the fact that they're reporting for different time periods. And the time periods, as I've shown here, are, are very specific. This, this estimate right here is all for 20, 1981 through 2010, which is a, a common 30-year climatology that is often reported for historical climate. But we can look at uh, the shorter time period and get different, um, different estimates of, of what recharge is. Uh, recharge also changes across the basin with precipitation. So you can see precipitation on the y-axis and recharge on, on the x-axis, excuse me, recharge on the y-axis. Um, this is looking at all of those years, 1981 through 2016, and this is averaging it over all the basins. And there's a, a nonlinear relationship of recharge to precipitation. So it's a little bit of a threshold of precipitation before you start getting recharge. If you look at it from the, where you get more recharge to less, the northern Sierra Nevada is the most linear, but as you go to where you get less recharge with less precipitation, there's much more of a threshold that you have to exceed in precipitation before you start getting recharge, and even more so when you get to the valley floor. So there is a point when you actually have to have a certain kind of precipitation year in order to get recharge in places in the valley. So our calibrations were done using streamflow data, which is our primary tool. This is measured data in all these places. Now, I will point out that not all stream gauges in the desert are created equal as well, and it's extremely difficult to get good streamflow measurements in the desert. Um, I can show you some of those results. But we used all these for whatever period of record was for each of these gauges and compared it to what our estimates were. So we did a really good job in the areas that have higher rainfall. So the, the, the South Fork Kern, which is in this Sierra Nevada, did quite well. Nine Mile, we got very good calibration results for. This is on the valley floor uh, up against the Sierra Nevada. Sand Canyon Creek also uh, did a very nice job. Darwin, uh, while this looked pretty good, uh, we had not very good calibration uh, statistics for it. And then there was, out of 10 gauges, there were three that looked sort of like this. This is Little Lake Creek. 
Uh, and it is, we couldn't match it at all. There is, the statistics were awful. Uh, there is intermittent flows. There's no, there's no guarantee with the gauge is no longer um, uh, viable, so we can't go out and see if there's issues with the gauge. But uh, there, there was no way for us to match those. When we look at all of the gauges together, we see uh, 10 gauges. They're in mixed geologies. We're matching to the total flows. So this is the percentage of flows we're matching. If it was 100%, that means our total flows for the period of record matched by matched 100%. Most often, we're below 100% because there is evaporation off of the, off of the um, runoff numbers that we're not um, capturing. And so stream flow, we're including our runoff estimates, not just recharge. R squared and, and Nash set cliff efficiency estimates are good for all but those three. And uh, so we're pretty, we're pretty happy with these numbers. So in order to get the, oh, and we also have, using that bat, we have playa runoff on, um, on the uh, China Lake playa. And we've got, these are corresponding to uh, generally wet years and corresponds to anecdotal evidence of having seen runoff. Um, doesn't happen every year, uh, but a lot of years we get it. So that was another piece of evidence. Um, in order to get the, the stream flow estimates to be accurate and to, to actually match the volumes, we had to uh, use evapotranspiration estimates. So if you have more evapotranspiration, you have less runoff, less stream flow. Um, in the high elevation locations, the Sierra and Mixed Conifer, for example, the red is measured based on remote, uh, I'm sorry, the blue is measured based on remotely sensed data and a water balance closure that was done nationally. And we sub-selected it specifically for the vegetation within this basin. Did a very good job on the, on the conifers, pinyon juniper, annual grasslands. As we get down onto the valley floor, the monthly time step for the remotely sensed data does not sense um, the uh, response in some places like desert scrub locations where when you get a rainfall, you get a flush of uh, vegetation that comes up, annual grasses and other annuals that use water, give a, a vapotranspiration signature, but isn't collected by the remotely sensed data. So we are, with our model, overestimating it on the valley floor for sagebrush desert scrub because it is facultative vegetation that can't be captured by the, um, the blue line, basically. And we had to do this, overestimate it, in order to match the uh, stream flow data. So this was, um, we were very happy with the way these results came out, we're following the patterns very well, and in places where they didn't have that, uh, that kind of vegetation response, we did a really good job. So we're pretty happy with the way this closes the water balance. Futures. Um, a little bit of feedback would be wel welcome here. This is a first first pass of uh, these are these are the ten models that are being used in California's fourth climate change assessment. They were uh, selected out of about 120 different models, and they were done. Uh, it took about three years with the California Technical Advisory Group to come up with these models that do a better job of matching national and California historical climate patterns. In other words, they're trying to make sure that the historical runs of the global climate models actually match historical patterns of data. So that's why these were chosen. Um, the ones in red are a business as usual um, emissions Greenhouse gas emissions scenario, RCP stands for representative concentration pathway. This is, we are currently um, on a trajectory that is above that to have higher, high, higher temperatures than that. So um, we are looking more strongly at using those as something more relevant to what management decisions would have to be made with. The green ones are a mitigated scenario. So there's 10 red ones and 10 green ones, and they're representing some, uh, projections that are wet, hot, or dry and hot, or sort of middle of the road. Our first uh, 
Our first pass at this, and I would welcome comments, is to choose one that would be wet. So that would be the one in the upper right. One that would be dry, that would be the one in the lower right. And then one that was closer to the average of all of them, which would be the one uh, nearest that ensemble mean, which is um, at the black dot. Uh, and using three, that would give a range of conditions that could give estimates of recharge providing um, the kinds of potential extreme conditions that you could then use for um, management decisions. Uh, so I want some feedback as soon as we're done here. Um, so I have two more slides here, results and discussion. Uh, so our final draft estimates for the valley are from local calibration, optimizing the water balance. They have similar values as recent studies, providing a general consensus for long-term averages. Uh, Spatial distribution of recharge is a function of climate, geology, soil storage, vegetation type. Most recharge comes from the Sierra Nevada, Coastal Range, and the volcanics. The calibration was optimized with actual evapotranspiration and stream flow and evidence of playa ponding. And we have a selection of global climate models for future climate analysis that is seeding. And lastly, we have this is our final progress uh, report for this period is completed the local calibration validation of the water balance model with comparison to the stream flow, actual ET, other estimates of recharge, and playa ponding. We've processed all the future climate projections. We've extracted future mean values for precipitation and air temperature to make a preliminary determination of suitable subsets for analyses. We have begun the process for a formal USGS data release which makes it publicly available to the data, formatted a web page, so the data that is available from this study with um, simplified uh, explanations will be available on the web page as soon as that is uh, approved through USGS. And we've submitted an internal proposal for funding uh, to do a peer-reviewed journal article on the results. There's no guarantee this will get funded, but this is, um, this is in the works to have something that is a peer-reviewed journal article. And that's my final slide. Are there questions? Uh, would the board have comments, questions? Please go. I, I have a question about that slide you wanted feedback on. Uh, the, the label on the, on the bottom axis, the x axis, was uh, cut off. So I, I couldn't figure out what oh, was going on okay. with that slide. Sorry. Um, can you see anything on the bottom axis? It's projected average air temperature change in degree C, and it goes from 1 to 6 on the far right. Okay, thank you. Okay, so all of the air, all of the projections indicate an increase in average air temperature. This is the change from uh, 1981 through 2010 until end of century, uh, 2070 through 2099. I'm sorry, that I failed to put that on the slide. So, so it's changed from that uh, historic baseline that you just gave? Yes, okay. yes. Okay, others, please. Okay, let's stay on the same slide for a quick second. Thank you very much. Um, what you're saying here, give me what this chart says in, uh, in three sentences, please. All, there is a model consensus that all models project an increase in average air temperature of up to over five degrees centigrade Celsius. And, you're and at, at the go. projected change in precipitation ranges from an increase in 30% to a decrease of 10% for all models. So there's a lot of variability in precipitation projections and pretty good consensus on increase in air temperature. Okay, so, uh, so I understand it. You're saying that uh, it's going to get warmer around here by a significant amount, a couple degrees here, and that yeah. the, the, the future progression projections for precipitation range anywhere from an increase of 30% to a decrease of 10%. Yes. Thank you. I got another question for you. Uh, could you go to the recharge, recharge chart, please, or the recharge chart? <laughs> That one? Uh, you haven't moved from the RCP chat. No, 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 back another one, go back. Yeah, that one right there. No, go back one more. No, that's it, I'm sorry, that's it, that's it. Go back to the last one, please, thank you. Sorry for the confusion. 
Give that one right there. Thank you. Uh, you're asking us to uh, understand your science that says that uh, in, in 2010, you did a study showing the recharge at 5,050 acre feet a year from average from 1981 to 2010. And then um, uh, in 2018, eight years later, that recharge doubled. My question to you is, and I see a dramatic change in the drainage from the Sierra Nevada column, it goes from 943 to 4760. That's a pretty significant, a wide, dramatic change in recharge. Uh, could you talk to me a quick second about how that happened? Is that bad data collection? Is that better technology? Or is that, um, uh, how much confidence should we put in this uh, particular chart? Thanks. Okay. So the, the 943, the, the 5,000 acre feet, that was done from a refined model that we published in 2017. So that, this isn't a time thing. This is a, a methodology thing. It was calibrated statewide using stream gauges, using 100 stream gauges throughout the state, using uh, a geology map that if you optimized it for a granite, it changed in all the places that granite was mapped. So we were trying to reduce error around a fit line in order to come up with a calibration that fit for the MODOC, for Humboldt County, and for the desert. So it was one map that was statewide, and as it turned out, we underestimated the calibration in the desert. When we went in and looked at the local calibration, where we completely redid everything by only looking at the granites in Indian Wells Valley and surrounding areas, only looking at the vegetation, so if you've got a certain vegetation that <clears throat> For example, annual grasslands in Indian Wells Valley are, when you average it over the whole Sacramento Valley and the coastal range, they respond differently. <coughs> so we get a different result if we only pull out and calibrate to a very local area where we're not averaging across anything. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so by understanding what you said is there are variables that you explored more deeply in your analysis on 2018 to give you some, um, and you expected those changes to occur, and you, uh, vegetation, that kind of stuff, what gave you diff different numbers, a significant different number in the total natural recharge. Absolutely. My question is this. I'd like to know your confidence level in the final line of 9,583, and I would like to know if there are any other variables that you have not yet considered that you planned on exploring when you do it again next year, or are you going to do it again next year? Thank you. Uh, our goal here was to look at all of the available data that we could that would help constrain the water balance. So we have looked at all of the water balance variables. We have not reported on everything. We could look at uncertainties in the precipitation data we used. We could look at uncertainties in the uh, potential evapotranspiration data we used. Um, certainly, there are a certain, certainly there are uncertainty in, in the stream gauging data. Um, given the data that was available, uh, we feel pretty strongly that this number is a very good estimate. Uh, I'm not going to tell you that it's 9583. I'm going to say it's about 900 acre feet. And keep in mind that that is averaged over that 30 year period. If we average it um, for 50 years, you're going to get a different number. If we average it for 1981 through 2016, you're going to get a different number. Um, because every year is different. I think the beauty of this analysis even though there are obviously uncertainties associated with it. Uh, the beauty of it is it is a, 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 a uh, independent approach to all of the other approaches here that have provided numbers that are within that same um, range of numbers. I feel really comfortable with that, that it turned out that way. It wasn't geared to try to come, make it come out that way. It's geared to the data. 
And the other beauty of it is that we're actually giving you a number for every year, showing you how it differs across the basis and how the precipitation makes it differ across the basin for different years. Thank you very much. Go ahead. Um, hi, my name is Peter Brown. Um, I, I like your assessment because of these other independent studies are so close uh, with 9,000 and change. Uh, I, think that's, I think that's meaningful. Um, on, on the one model, uh, the mean was 5% of, of um, increased temperature in, in inches or something like that, wasn't it? Um, the one with the di diamonds where, the, where you're projecting in the future, the, 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 the warming trend. Would it, be uh, would it be logical to say that that 5% would be, when you, when you average them both and you go to the 5%, would that be a, a safe number to use as a projection of, uh, of increased rain? It is not a safe assumption to assume that an average of the model means anything. Okay, so it's just a number to, to use because it's in between the high and the low? Yeah. Okay. Because it's because it's closest to the mean. I mean, it's just something that says yeah, it's something that is closer to not ha no, you know, not having. Um, oh, I don't even know. I it, you know, it's, it's, everybody battles about how to deal with uh, multiple projections. The fact that it could be wet, it could be dry. Um, when we do the analysis, I think the key is that we will show that there will be more variability. There will be more droughts and more wet years. Um, yeah, there's going to be more rainfall, but even in the, the ones that have high rainfall, they still have more droughts. So it's, uh, it's not as simple as just looking at the, at the, um, the data for 30-year means and saying that that's a safe number to pick. There is no, there is no model consensus on, on precipitation direction of change. Okay. So um, given that, um, as time progresses and your modeling gets uh, more refined, um, do you see that as improving? In other words, your ability to predict, um, you know, using predictive uh, equations now, does that get better as time goes, as you understand the climate better? So like in 10 years? Um, Go ahead. Um, our, well, yes, in a way. Um, I, what I'll say is that, and it's not us uh, personally, our models are, are uh, developed on the basis of historical data sets, but our model is, our model is also using um, functions that, are <clears throat> that have been determined using global climate modeling to be more accurate. For example, um, as air temperature increases in the future, Potential evapotranspiration has been found not to increase linearly with air temperature. It actually plateaus off. There's a certain point at which it doesn't keep increasing. Our models reflect that. So that's something that we have improved our model over time as the global climate change models have gotten better. I can assure you that the climate change models are improving in their ability to capture process, larger scale and finer scale processes. So. This is the, the fifth uh, IPCC data set. There's another one ongoing right now. It should be available in another, uh, I think, 2020. So there will be another iteration that hopes to capture more processes globally that then end up reflecting better processes locally. Okay, uh, one last question. Uh, thank you. Um, that, that made sense, too. Um, you're using ET rates. Um, as, as you know, as the consumption part, um, evaporation as a standalone, does that play a significant difference in an arid region like ours uh, versus just ET, or, or is, does the ET kind of cover the evaporation by itself? I'm not sure I understand the question. There is a chill evapotranspiration. That's your driving force. Right. And then there's the evaporation that, that occurs by the plant, the actual evapotranspiration. Right. But like, it's, um, let's say you had a swimming pool full of water and there's no plants and, you know, here we, I've been told it's like 81 inches of year of just evaporation without transpiration. <laughs> does, does, it, does it make a difference in an arid region 
um, of that of that large of an evaporation rate versus the ET rate because our vegetation is very you know limited. Um, you could have a huge potential ET rate, but the available water doesn't doesn't necessarily um, provide an actual ET rate that is great at all. The problem in the desert is is yes, there's a big driving, there's a big gradient. Uh, for water reuse, but the, if there's no vegetation for the plants, then they, they shut down. So they don't use the water. Right. Okay. Thank you. Others? Uh, this is uh, Commander Longbottom. I just had, I don't really have a question, but can you go back to the slide that you were on for uh, Supervisor Gleason that had the uh, 9583, I believe it was the number of recharge? Thank you. And can you scroll down? We can't see the the most the more recent one, which I believe you said was five thousand something or other. Is it here? No, no, that's the two thousand seventeen. Didn't you do a baseline as well from? Um, I have. Oh, there it is. The six thousand five hundred forty-seven. Thank you. Yeah, I will. I will make these uh, slides available. Yeah, because the reason I was I was just curious along Supervisor Gleason's point, you know, the difference between nine forty three and forty seven sixty. I was curious where the major deltas were from your nineteen eighty one to two thousand ten versus two thousand to two thousand thirteen. Oh. Um, so no, I don't have a question. Thank you. I just wanted to see it. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna show you this again. This is the time the historical time period. So this shows several really wet years in the in the earlier time period. That um, and without the 2013, 14, 15 drought. Thank you. Other council comments? Uh, this is Bob Harrington. Uh, back on your uh, uh, climate model slide, you know what might be helpful for this group is to have those um, projections out to 2040 rather than 2000 because th that's sort of a, a target date in uh, Sigma's groundwater management for attaining uh, sustainability so uh, that that's an excellent comment I appreciate that a lot and we will do that <laughs> yeah really okay is there any other board comments from staff or uh, the board okay seeing none I'll open it up for public comment This is Don Decker. Um, you mentioned many times in your presentation uh, water balance, but you actually didn't say really anything about the balance. Uh, you said nothing about the discharge element, the natural discharge element uh, in a desert playa uh, condition like we have. That's the uh, equilibrium point for uh, bringing the balance uh, about, and you said nothing uh, of it. Um, if you just consider the native recharge, you're missing uh, the, the actual understanding that we need, which is how much water is there actually available for the aquifer to um, either be replenished uh, or, or just conditioned. Uh, what uh, what playa discharge, evaporative discharge, uh, have you looked at? We've not looked at any. We don't have any data associated with playa discharge. Uh, our um, goal was to look at what the natural recharge was that got below plant roots. If, in fact, it comes back out, uh, we have no measurements with which to constrain that estimate. 
Now we could look at other playa estimates where they actually have measurements um, and come up with a, a distribution. There have been estimates in the uh, in some of the reports, but they're very. Um, there's not been any uh, good um, consensus uh, upon any of those measurements because I mean estimates because they weren't measured. Uh, if there were any uh, data available, that certainly would be something that could be done. I mean, our, our goal here was to just be able to get water into the subsurface below the plant roots so that it was in the direction of going downward. And um, a hydrogeologic model is something that is more likely to be able to um, ascertain the, the gradients and uh, directions of, of inputs and outputs. I understand that completely, and it's the reason I brought the question up. Uh, most people are thinking that this uh, recharge number is actually going to be valuable to us in and of itself for constraining the uh, potential water consumption in this valley. And, and without the actually considering the water balance, the true, in the true sense, you have an incomplete uh, number. You're absolutely right. I agree with you on that. Uh, we could come up with an estimate on the basis of literature values alone to put error bars around what we think our estimate is. And we can do that. Tell me the significance. I'm sorry to interrupt the public comment, but tell me the significance of not having that data. What do you, would you estimate that impact being on our recharge number? Um, not very much. Uh, given the amount of evaporation from plants, the playa has no plants on it or very little plants on it. Um, I mean, I, I really don't know. I would say on the order of potentially 5% maximum. And it really depends on, I mean, it's a long-term loss. It's something that happens... Um, that happens over uh, decades. It's a it's a it's based on a, a gradient, and so it, the water that's evaporating is likely water that's not five or ten years old. It's probably older than that. Um, I, I would have to do uh, some more research to be able to get you a better a better guess than that. It's not I'm, I'm not a groundwater modeler, so I'm it's not a value that I use very often. Okay, thank you. And go ahead, public comment still. Sophia Merck. Um, I had a question in regards to um, the water that was imported in um, by DWP last year in 2017. Um, is there any way to um, substantiate or, or um, put that? Um, I know it was artificial, but that, that water should be part of the graph too, I believe. Um, you can get that information from DWP, and I also believe that BLM also has that information, too. That should be incorporated into it for the final analysis. Thank you. Um, our, our work scope was not to include imported water. Uh, that's, a, that's far outside of our work scope, and it's something that anybody could add to the study easily if they wanted to add those, those numbers. No, having those numbers there doesn't mean that we know what the recharge is, according to the imported water. It's just the water that was used. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. My name is Raymond Kelso, and I would like to know more about absorption rates versus versus depth. Uh, the numbers that I've, I've seen up there show uh, rain uh, by the year. I don't see anything about any change in the water depth any, anywhere in the valley. Um, I would like to ask this gentleman uh, just a simple question. Uh, the rains that we had this week or last week when am I going to see that at the tap? 
Now, uh, the reason why I ask that is because back in the 60s, I read reports saying that we had a recharge rate of about three years. Uh, a couple years later, there was another uh, doctor that said we ha it takes 10,000 years. And sitting in the Restoration and Advisory Board, I've read information and documents that says it's a minimum of 40,000 years. So this information is available. Um, some of you know about it, some of you don't. But I think that's the major question here, is when can the public see the results of the rain that we're having here in the, in the, in the recent past, and when will that come out of our faucet? Any comments? Uh, yeah, I can have a comment on that. Um, in order to understand when it comes out of your tap has to do with where you get the water out of the wells, where, the, where it rained in the basin, how close your wells and your water is to where the recharge zones are. So the people that had different dates on when the water was available were looking at probably lots of different data sources. If your well is up next to the recharge zone in the, uh, in the Sierra Nevada, you might have water that ends up in your tap on the order of, if, if, your, if your water well is there, you could have it in your tap in the order of decades. Um, if you're out in the middle of the playa, you're probably not going to get water for 40,000 years. There was True. a r recent... Uh, water you're pumping, the water you're pumping right now is probably 10,000 years old. And there's lots of different studies, but I'm, not, I'm throwing that number out there as it's just a... a, a a number, but there's lots of different studies depending on where you look, and where you take the sample, and and um, what depth you take the sample that identifies what age the water is. And there's a lot of people doing that throughout the desert. I don't know what kind of dead data has been available in. I was not able to find data available in, in Indian Wells Valley uh, that actually told us what the age dates were, but. Some of the other studies have looked at these, and they're, they're, it's old water. Water you're pumping now is old. Didn't Baron Brock say that water was moving in the valley about a foot a year? Is anybody, am, am I attributing it to the wrong person? Um, you may not be, and if you were to say moving in the valley, consider what the direction of the arrows are if you look at a cross section. So the water goes down and it moves across and it may move up, it may not, it depends on where you're tapping it. Okay. I can answer that question partly, Peggy. This is Don Decker again. Um, the place to look for the age-dated water um, summaries is in the recent AB 303 study, the final report of that uh, effort. Uh, 2012 is the date, I believe. Um, the majority of the water that we're pumping here is Pleistocene in age. Your 10,000 years is uh, pretty much an average. Uh, the, the main water body in the central part of the valley, the intermediate field, is 24,000 years BP. And near the uh, base of the Sierra, uh, west of the airfield, 6,000 years BP. There is no evidence in the groundwater studies as far as age is concerned uh, that uh, modern day recharge has any influence at all. The uh, question of how long it takes to get to the tap uh, is uh, given quite clearly in those uh, Pleistocene ages, even close to the Sierra. The, the recharge pulses that we would expect to see uh, in wells near the Sierra uh, are simply those recharge pulses at the best are very weak. The, the recharge, the, the natural recharge uh, uh, in modern times is not a significant contribution to the water that we're pumping is the bottom line summary. Okay, thank you. Is there any other comments? Any other board comments? 
I thank you for your report. We're looking forward to any new additional item you have for us and a final summary. Thank you so very much. Okay, thank you. All right. Next we, will, we will go on to the next item, uh, the report from the technical, well, oh, I can't talk today, T the TAC. Adam? Thank you very much, uh, Peggy Breeden. Uh, this was our Thursday, January um, 4th meeting, and uh, the call to order was issued. All TAC members that were present were recorded. There were sufficient members for uh, an ongoing quorum. Next were public comments, and during this time, it was brought to the TAC attention that uh, TAC member Michael Powell is out for personal medical reasons. Uh, then uh, the previous meeting minutes for the December 6th TAC meeting uh, were then uh, approved. Next for the administration item, TAC members were reminded to complete their ethics training and the Form 700 requirements as soon as possible. Next item, priority projects tasks. These were then presented by Jean Moran with Stetson and then discussed. Uh, other members of the Stetson group were also present over the phone. Steve Reich discussed the updated uh, database management system, DMS, which is under development. Individual comments from TAC members uh, began, and Eddie Teasdale requested a document containing all of the comments submitted regarding the DMS. A long discussion time then took place. It was noted that the sustainability criteria may need to be established before the database is further developed. It was then proposed that an ad hoc discussion time be included that would provide an excellent comparison of the four DMS systems that are developed or are being developed. Uh, however, members of the TAC are concerned that developing and spending additional money on a DMS that likely is already not needed due to the existing DMSs currently available will lose needed time and money. Additionally, money has already been granted and paid for that supports the uh, SkyTem Randall database for the Valley, but also additionally the KCWA database has been upgraded recently and contains multiple Valley monitor wells, which includes the CASGEM wells. This led to the matrix discussion to compare and determine similarities. So uh, with my next uh, comment, or talking here, the TAC is now requesting the GA board uh, to direct Stetson to build a database comparison matrix, which includes all four existing databases. And the TAC will compare and present similarities, all of which may be done also by individual comments and an ad hoc discussion as needed. Uh, next was the ground truthing discussion. Gene informed the TAC that Stefan Bork uh, from the Navy removed duplicate wells from the existing database. It was an update. Uh, the next item, Gene then presented the DRI model review update. Stetson has received model review comments. They have also requested cost estimates from DRI, but no timeline has been made. Stetson is also waiting for the Navy's full review of the draft review report. A couple of uh, Concerns discussed are the compatibility of involved data sets and incorporating new data from SkyTem and USGS studies. In essence, now we have more of that data from USGS because they just presented it. And finally, uh, in this uh, discussion, Stetson commented at this time that the uh, POAM is not scheduled for a revision at this time. Uh, PAS status for TAC has been assigned for January. The PAS document is in draft form and can be changed as needed. TAC was instructed to return personal comments to Stetson. Next item, the discussion of future agenda items that took place. The TAC requests permission from the GA to include a future agenda item schedule as uh, a standing item on the agenda. At this time, it is not standing. It simply mentions there will be future item discussions. The TAC also requested that they receive an update on the PAS each month. Next item, number seven, committee member announcements or comments that then occurred. 
Tim Parker presented and discussed current and newly found seismic data that is now available and may be processed to assist in the hydrogeologic groundwater modeling for the basin. The El Paso Basin has limited groundwater data. Uh, much of the uh, uh, past models that were done also know this and it was recognized in their models as well. However, past seismic data has been located and an analysis of a portion of that data will indicate if it may be fully reprocessed for groundwater modeling. It has benefits for these models for the entire basin. There is a small fee to investigate the previous seismic data and then if it is uh, a good use then we will receive more information on the cost of that. Next, Earl Wilson mentioned the occasional difficulty in opening large digital information that is available and provided to everyone uh, his comment, Don Deziba, uh, excuse me, yeah, Don Zadiba kindly responded stating the Indian Wells Valley Water District is always available and they are happy to provide printed copies of any of the email documents that are needed. And that is it. The TAC meeting was finished and adjourned at 3.50 p.m. Okay, thank you, Adam. Uh, I know there's, there are two things you asked us for. I'm going to put those on the next item, but right now is there comments from, from the uh, board? Please. I really miss your song. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it was very good. You're welcome, and thank you. Okay, any we're please, Commander? Getting to know. I just have a, a couple questions. Um, what does PAS stand for? Potential action. Potential action Ex schedule. Oh, okay. Yes. Different than the poem. Yes. Yes. Okay. Potential action. <laughs> um, so just a quick update I can give for uh, numbers or I guess letter C on here so the Navy has reviewed the model um, particularly for the three items that um, Stetson has indicated are requirements uh, for uh, developing the, um, the GSP and so we've gotten a cost estimate from DRI and I've requested those funds from the region so I'm, I'm hopeful that we will come up with those funds in one way or the other in the not too distant future. So I, I can't comment yet on the nice to haves. We're still taking a look at that, but we focused on the mandatory items and are moving out with those. Um, the other question I had, am I reading this correctly, number D, that we're not planning to update the POAM? No, as far as I understand, uh, at that time, Stetson did not have a need to revision or change the POAM because that comes from others outside. Are you going to talk about that, that more? He's fine yeah, to do yes, that. we are. We are updating the POAM right now, and, pro and, and most of the updating we're doing is on, on schedules. We are certainly doing schedules, and um, the comments that you've provided. There's three items that I know of. Uh, the commander you've provided. We are updating the model right now. We hope to have it back out by the next TAC meeting. We didn't have it for today, but we hope to have it back. And that's some of the communication I know we've had okay. offline with, with you, Commander. I'll hold up my poem comments till we address the poem. Okay. Thank you. That's good. Those things have changed in just the past couple of months, or a couple yes. weeks. Yes. Good. Okay. Is there any other uh, council comments, board comments? Is there any public comment? Okay, uh, then we'll accept. There is, there is one. Oh, I see. Okay, thank you. I don't give you much time to jump up, Don, so you gotta. <laughs> I had back issues the last week, so I don't jump too well. Um, uh, Don Zadib, Indian Wells Valley Water District. Addressing uh, Adam's report with regard to the data management system, I have three documents that I provided to the recording secretary to distribute to you. And I apologize in advance for getting us out so late, but please recognize the TAC meeting was just barely two weeks ago, so it took a while to get this together and, and uh, you know, get it reviewed. Uh, one document is, one thing Adam referred to is a matrix. It uh, doesn't compare the four data management systems. We didn't do DWR, but this was initiated by the Water District. Uh, we we uh, tried to list the attributes of the Stetson data management system that's being developed, as well as the Ramble uh, initiative, which is related to the SkyTem data. 
and then also the existing data management system from uh, Kern County Water Agency. So Water District consulted with uh, Ramble staff and with uh, Michelle Anderson at Kern County Water Agency, put this together. I also have a, what's listed as a technical memorandum, which uh, briefly describes the three data management systems and has some recommendations. If, with your permission, Madam Chair, if I could just read the recommendations. This would be on the, uh, on the document titled Technical Memorandum. The database and data management systems efforts of Stetson is to a large extent redundant and overlapping with those of Kern County Water Agency and Ramble. Stetson is developing a limited system in terms of data population, 30 to 40 wells in the basin, which may be sufficient for managing the basin, although that remains to be proven over time. In any case, we believe the proposed approach is insufficient for updating the hydrologic, hydrogeologic conceptual model periodically as required in the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act. The Ramble data framework, database framework and data management system is going to be comprehensive and more valuable than either the Kern County Water Agency and Stetson efforts, as it is existing capability to meet sigma requirements from managing the basin to periodically updating the hydrological conceptual model. Both Stetson and Ramble efforts involve state funding for developing the database data management systems, and this is duplicative. The state is involved in the Stanford groundwater architecture project which has provided the SkyTem Aerial Electromagnetic Survey and will provide a three-dimensional hydrogeological conceptual model and a fully populated hydrogeological database and data management system. The state may reasonably expect that Indian Wells Valley Groundwater Sustainability Plan include the, pro the products provided by the Stanford project and not the more limited data management efforts proposed by Stetson. The Water District recommends that the Groundwater Authority consider how to best utilize the efforts of Stetson to work cooperatively with the existing Kern County Water Agency and Ramble efforts to save precious and limited resources. The Water District further recommends the Groundwater Authority go forward with the GOGIS and underlying database being developed by Ramble and that Stetson continue to develop the development of the web application to work as a front end access and also determine what additional elements are required within the GOGIS to manage a basin, including data sets and security. The third uh, document that you're provided with gives you background of the GOGIS uh, platform and also discussion about the Stanford project. And again, just to remind you, the Stanford project is going forward. There's a meeting uh, January 31st up in Palo Alto, which I'll be attending to kick the project off. Uh, as is stated in the memo, uh, the GOGIS system is, is what the state is looking at using statewide. As a reminder, the, Scott, the, the groundwater architecture project from Stanford involves three basins. Out of 431 basins recognized by DWR, our little basin is one of three in this study. So this is a, this is a fantastic opportunity for recognition of Indian Wells Valley. The project that Stanford is undertaking, one of, the pro one of the primary objectives of it is to develop a template for developing uh, groundwater models throughout the state using the aerial geophysical data collected through SkyTem. And again, the data management system for that would be using the GOGIS. And I have no intentions of trying to minimize what Stetson has done. They've done some great work and had a great product. And I think we can work together going forward to collaborate and get the best product. The one concern that I would like to express is again the use of resources. We know the Groundwater Authority has limited funds. The Water District has advanced $500,000 and we're waiting for approval of the grant. But we have an opportunity with this data management system being developed by Ramble at no cost to the Groundwater Authority to have a comprehensive data management system that meets all requirements of Sigma and even exceeds it in some cases. So. I would like to use the term Adam uh, Alan Christensen used last month, tap the brakes. I think we need to tap the brakes on development of the system. And I would agree on behalf of the Water District with the TAC's recommendation to, I'd like to be able to provide them with this information, have them consider it at their met, uh, meeting on February 1st, and then come back to the GA with a recommendation on how to proceed. 
Thank you. After um, reading your report, I went to Ron and to Steve and said, is there a possibility that this work could be, I'm going to use the word handed off, I don't want to use it quite that minimally, to the TAC and allow the TAC to help develop this process more fully and understand where we are because I think we know where we're going and I know we know how we're getting there. But what I want is to have deaths and work with the TAC and the, all the other groups to try to develop this process so we have a car that runs. Just doesn't have the motor, but has everything. And we have the motor from all the studies that have been done over the years. And I'm wondering what the board thinks about that suggestion. OK, if you ask me, I would say that a couple things, a couple comments. Um, Thanks. I agree with many, much of what you said. I think uh, collaboration is paramount, <coughs> and getting uh, that uh, program underway has been a benefit to us, and hopefully it will continue to be a benefit to us. I have some concerns about um, not owning a data management system. Who, who would own the data management system if the SkyTem organization moved the, on? Uh, the contract with Ramble to develop it is, with, is through the Water District, and uh, the funding for this the contract was for $146,600. And of course, that was that whole project with SkyTem and the Ramble Data Management System was funded again by uh, the Water District, by COSO Operating Company, Meadowbrook uh, Farms, and uh, Mojave Pistachio. So the contract is with the Water District, and any product that results from that study would, would come to the Water District which we obviously make available as, as, to the board as right. part of the... Right. I, I, I have issues with any agency, any agency other than this board having ownership, uh, direct ownership of that product. I'd like to have uh, control of that when I want to have it um, action taken with, with regard to it. I want to have this board to have a control of it. I appreciate what you're doing. Hopefully we can find some way to, to collaborate completely with that if we can, but uh, my, um, I don't know, I, I don't know, understand data management systems. I don't know, I, but I want a data management system that is specifically used to help us solve this particular problem. And I don't know if that data management system is capable of that. And I'd like to hear Mr. Stetson or Mr. Uh, Johnson talk about um, that for a minute. Could you talk about your management system and your management system? Um, well, uh, I can a little bit. Uh, I, I just got this, and, and as, as Don mentioned, it was sent out just, just yesterday, but I was out of the office all day yesterday at meetings, and obviously to get it for our morning meeting, I left pretty early this morning. So I, I, I've got it on my computer. I didn't print it at home, but I just got this, so I'm just reading it right now. Um, and I think, it's a, I think the suggestion is, is the, you know, it makes sense, I mean, to try to do this. We're, we're not opposed at all to trying to minimize the effort and consolidate the efforts and minimize costs. I mean, that, that, I can tell you right now, that's not a, not a concern at all. Um, some of the things that you mentioned, uh, um, Supervisor Gleason, about um, having ready access and, and having ownership and be, be able to update and be able to make changes and, and who actually controls how the, how the management system is run or changed or operated, those things should be worked out, so we should know. Because I, I, I agree with you, and, and our goal, our goal originally, and still is, was to create a data management system with a database to support it uh, that we turn over to the authority. Whether we're your water resources manager six months from now or six years from now, it's yours, and you would be able to operate it and run it. And I think we need to have that same level. Uh, my advice would be we have that same level of access and ownership with whatever arrangement we have with the water we have with the water district and I'm sure we can work we can certainly look at those things I I, I have other concerns that we've expressed we've discussed before uh, that that, that uh, in addition to what you just mentioned I don't think there's any any uh, we don't have any concern at all about assembling those organizing those concerns and expressing those with with Don and, and his group and, and their consultants um, to make sure they're addressed and be able to come back and, and report that and report what those issues are and whether or not we're comfortable they've been addressed or not going forward and what it might do to, you know, what it might do to, um, let's just look at the big picture, what it might do with our schedule that we've already got. We're on a tight schedule for the GSP. I want to make sure that we're, we're there. I don't know. I, I don't know. We, we don't know really where they're at on this. They may be ahead of us, maybe behind us. I'm not sure. But what it does to the schedule, 
what it does to our funding mechanism with our Prop 1 application and our matching funds. If we're, we just discussed possibly, if we're not going to spend the money, can we move it to some other, some other task and, and, and do work with, other, with that money? So I think we need to look at those things and make sure we're, we're comfortable with those. And right now we are on a, as everybody knows here, we are on a pretty tight schedule uh, to try and get this thing done. Um, I, I don't think there's any problem taking, taking a little time on the side to, to evaluate all this, but we, we really should keep going on these, these efforts on the schedule because it is pretty tight. Is um, there other? And again, recon oh, I'm sorry. Uh, again, recognizing that you obviously didn't have an opportunity to look at this, and I, I apologize for that. Um, attachment two, page two, just to address your concern about timing, Mr. Mm -hmm. Johnson. Page two at the bottom paragraph, the Stanford Ground for Groundwater Architecture Project team will be meeting on January 31st to further coordinate on tasks in the three basins to initiate planning, AEM data collection in the Butte and San Luis Obispo County. In the Indian Wells Valley Basin, data compilation was initiated in late 2016 and is near complete. The SkyTem AEM survey was conducted in November 2017, and initial AEM data inversion is ongoing. The next step is for Sacramento State University, working with Ramble and the Water District to begin a di data digitization and database population into the GIS system. Anticipated to require two to three months to complete in early spring 2018. So my understanding is that the data management system will be available sometime this spring. And I think that still falls in line with the schedule that we're looking at for the program. Okay. That's what we want to look at for sure. Okay. But thanks, I, uh, thanks for pointing that out. I, sure. I just noted that. I haven't seen that. Yeah, I just, I just wanted to, to get some clarification because I've been operating a, under maybe their assumptions and I shouldn't have done that, but in terms of the charge we've given the, to the water resource manager and working with the TAC, um, I have, have been operating believing that part of what his scope was going to be was looking at existing work that was done out there, work that's, on, that's currently in progress, and identifying what is of value to the development of our GSP. So I guess the clarification I'm looking for is, if, assuming that's a correct assumption, that that's part of what our water resource manager is doing, is looking at what available resources out there, what additional re existing data is available, and identifying what is of value to that ultimate plan for trying to achieve sustainability. Do we need every month to have the task asking us to direct it to do specific things or to, such as, you know, please create a matrix of all the existing databases that are out there so we can identify for the water resource manager, um, you know, what he, what he should see value in? Or have we given sufficient enough direction to our water resource manager in his contract to do that work that, that we should trust that he's going to work on these things with the TAC, with the parties that are, that are working on other um, studies currently to, to identify where things can be utilized and brought into his work or where, th where the timing may not work out. Because, I, I mean, I, I'm relying upon him to provide, to do that, that outreach, through, either through the TAC or on his own, and to provide us with recommendations on, on you know, how all that gets incorporated into the eventual plan. I mean, that's the way I'm looking at it. Um, I, I appreciate that the TAC wants to be careful and not to overstep, uh, and, the, the, and the, the PAC, the same, does not want to overstep, but, but I, I believe we, got to, we have to give our water resource manager some, we've given him guidance, so we need to give him some, some ability to do his job and authority to do his job. It's, it's kind of the way I see it. Um, and I don't know if, there's, if that's in line with what, what everybody else on the board is thinking, but I just wanted to make that comment that I just, I want to make sure we're all on the right, the same page, and, and that the TAC understands that we've given the water resource manager authority to do this work, and it's not maybe not always necessary for them to ask us, you know, can you tell them to do this one specific thing? Does that make sense? Yes. There was no no um, intent on my part to criticize what Steve has done. In fact, I went to him and said, "There's, I think my quote was, there's no way in God's green earth you could know every study that's been done since day one in the valley, but the TAC does. And so working closely with, with Steve, the TAC can help develop this, and, and uh, Steve can come up with a final 
product to bring to us and say, here's where we are. So I don't want to diminish his role by any means. I think he's doing exactly what we've asked him to do. <coughs> sure. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mayor um, uh, and Chairwoman. Um, as, as part of the last TAC meeting, just so, to back up a little bit, as part of the last TAC meeting, um, there were, Steve Reich did make a presentation on the database management system and the use of the databases. He did make a presentation. There were questions that came up, and one of our tasks, one of our jobs was to respond to those questions, both there and follow up. Um, one of, as a result of some of the questions that came up, Steve did produce a tech memo that was sent out as part of the board package to explain some of responses to some of those questions. Um, it has been updated uh, based upon some feedback we received, and I've provided uh, the updated version uh, out here on the, on, the de on the table. So uh, I think part of the confusion about the studies and not knowing the studies is um, in, the, in the tech memorandum that Steve prepared, essentially getting things up to, up to, up to date, bringing things up to date, it included what we knew about the SkyTem project and the database that they're working on. Um, there was no information available at that time that we're aware of on the database system that we're, uh, on the data management system that we're getting now. This has come up since the TAC meeting. So this is brand new stuff. So I think part of the confusion, I agree with Bob uh, pretty much 100% on what Bob is suggesting that this is part of our task. I think part of the confusion is just the timing of this is that we just had a TAC meeting and we presented the database management system. We got some comments back. We addressed it. We thought it we were on the same track, and then we got this new information just yesterday about what 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 this whole process is. And uh, so I think we need to evaluate that. Just as Bob suggests, that's something we should do. It would be a normal normal course of, a, of our work is to evaluate that to see how it works. If there's changes that should be made, we'll come back and tell you. If there's concerns we have with the direction, we'll come back and tell you that too. Madam Chairman, may I make a comment on that? Please. Uh, Jean there, we had very good conversations back and forth. She was fully aware of everything that I was going to state here. And so I just wanted to make everybody understand, know that our discussions during the TAC meeting two weeks ago were good discussions. Yes, yeah. And everybody had good comments back and forth. But all this, like Steve just said, this is information that just came out within yeah. a, well, a week's time. So it's all brand new to us. Yeah. and. In some ways, it's exciting to see where we can move forward with all sure. this. It just happened to be the day before the board meeting. <laughs> so we're yes, talking it about did. It. We're talking about it now before we have a chance really to yeah. collaborate on it and figure out yeah. where we're at. And those that had that data jumped forward and presented it to everybody, knowing yeah. it would be better to get it out as fast as he sure. could so that everybody yeah. could see it and be ready yeah. to discuss here yeah. in this And meeting. we're fine with that, for sure. Yeah. Okay, is there anything you desire from us other than, than acceptance of the report? You've given direct. Oh, I'm sorry, Peter. I'm sorry. Ignore. <laughs> Only Peter overhead. wants to speak. My apologies. I've been told to. I talk too much, so I'm trying to be less talkative. But that's impossible. Anyways, um, so from my perspective, um, um, the TAC is is a work engine, and uh, because we they've been together for well over 20 years working on these specific issues, uh, it's 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 already assumed that they they're a time and money saver, um, uh, and so. I don't think there's any wrong or right anywhere. I just think if something better or new comes along, you look at it and, and you evaluate it. And I, I'm sure you have all that ability, so I'm not questioning all that. Uh, there, the, 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 the fact of ownership, it's just a system that has data in it. And, and so um, we would own the data, um, but it would be accessible to those we grant as, access to. So, and we, we, the Water District, are part of this committee, therefore it is a product of this committee. Um, the good thing is, is we paid for it uh, via a different program. But the awesome thing is that it came about prior to this whole situation that the uh, the ground or what is it the salt? What is it this? Where, where did it originate? The brackish water. Brackish water. Yeah, yeah. So that that actually funded all this with our money and, and other money. So so the the fact that it's free is a serious bonus. It's it's hundreds of thousands of dollars we don't have to spend. I don't see a problem with there being grant money available for if it was pigeonholed for that. I'm sure there will be different gyrations of your line items. So I don't see that as being a problem. But I just want to make it clear that it's free and that uh, the data is ours and we control that, the access to it. And the recommendation for, uh, for Stetson to uh, create an interface, web access and stuff, that gives us that, that control. 
And so I thought that was really good. I actually, actually haven't read this either. I'm totally familiar with the program and with all the other presentations that I've seen. Uh, but the, the thing that I like even more, and I don't know if you stressed it enough, this, this is, this, the purpose of all of this with Stanford is, it, is they want to make a template for the entire state of California to use, for everybody to use. It's kind of like the, you remember Sony and Betamax, you know, or, you know, all that, or VHS and Beta? Beta kept their stuff and VHS let it go. Uh, maybe one was better than another, but one became universal. In this case, this is a superior product um, that, that's, that's targeted to become this, the standard norm for the entire state of California. And that's why the Danes are putting in money into this, because they see potential for their, their business to, to generate wealth, but it's also the, the fastest way to map the entire state of California and measure the water. I mean, it's, it's, it's like off the chart fast. So, so I like it. It saves us money. Um, we would control the interface, therefore we have control. So I'm, I'm, I'm for anything we can do in-house, um, just like the base uh, is going to come up with a couple more dollars to, I, I'm not meaning that in a small way. <laughs> well, when your budget's two or three billion dollars, you know, give me a break. But anyways, um, the thing is, is that that's, that's our job. Our job is to use our existing stuff, our existing funding, our existing knowledge base to put all this together. Uh, we just happen to be water, which is very handy because we're talking about water. And they just happen to build a model ahead of time that's really awesome that can be tweaked a little bit and satisfy all those little, those little check boxes. So totally for that. Anytime we can save money using in-house capacity, great. I don't think it diminishes uh, uh, in engineering at all. I think it just gives them a bonus to do something else, somewhere else, something better, something more. That's, all I that's the way I look at it. Go ahead. My, 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 I, I agree with what you're saying. Uh, Ms. Brown, uh, I like it. My, my issue is this. The, da the Danes or whoever is pushing this system at Stanford to get accepted throughout the state is doing it like exactly like you said to generate wealth. Everybody that's the right. Right. That's their right and that's what they're doing. So my question is, okay, so they're going to own it. And that means we're going to have to generate, help them generate that wealth by giving them our wealth. And my concern, and I want just to just clearly understand is, what is it going to be cheaper for us to do? To invest $150,000, $130,000 to develop our own data management system and control it in-house, or is it going to be more expedient or more efficient or more expensive or less expensive to rent a system that someone else is, has ownership of, and we're going to have to make adjustments to that system so that it steers to develop information that's of importance to us, are we going to have complete access to that system, or are we going to have to pay for access to that system, and who's going to control that system? Do, if, if you guys control the data, great, that's a benefit to us, as a, because I know we can work together. Is someone else going to control the system? So we have to, is there a cost associated with that? How does that whole thing work? And uh, what's the best way to go understanding that this DMS, this data management system, is going to be the pillar of the work and the decisions we make within this particular uh, basin? Thank you. Commander? I was just curious. My understanding is DWP is developing a uh, best practices for a number of items, data management being one of them. And I was just curious if Mr. Johnson or anybody that might know whether the, um, I guess what the Danes are doing in the Sky Tem is in compliance with what they're saying is going to need to be done with those best practices. Because inevitably, we, we want to fall in line with the system to Supervisor Gleason's point that we control, but it's also going to be easily accepted within our GSP and, and meets the standard and the norm. So I was kind of curious, because there is a benefit to it being in the same language as everything else that DWP is going to be looking at. So I was just curious. Well, Commander, did you mention DWP or DWR? I, I'm having acronym issues today. Okay, DWR. So, yeah, that would be the yeah. one. Thank you. I, I can tell you that I know we are, and I'm very confident that, that, that Don and his group are all, all, all coordinating with DWR to make sure everything we do going forward is compatible with what the state's doing. I mean, that's, that is key. You're right. Okay. Um, Don, did you have any more? 
No, again, I just wanted to emphasize the apology for uh, getting this out, but again, we, you know, less than two weeks to put all this together. It took quite a bit of effort to get this done. And again, just there is never any intent to undermine or criticize anything Stetson is doing. Our only interest is to try and use the resources we have effectively and efficiently to get the best product. And again, this is something that's being offered at no cost to the Groundwater Authority. And I think that right there is one big, uh, one big bone to chew on. Okay, thank you. Adam. And if I may also make the comment, members of the TAC, our worries about funding was our inability to maybe move forward with our water uh, management group. Because we know you, of course, need the uh, monies to, uh, to do what we are asking to do. And we were worried if, if too much of this is hitting at one time, mm -hmm. can we mix it together so that you will retain and have the money you need to continue to help us sure. when we get it all set? Sure. And that's, that's what we were aiming at. It wasn't to slap back in some other way. Sure. Oh, yeah. sure. Jean didn't felt that way. She had no. big smiles on her. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Bob, I understand you have a question. I, well, I just was going to clarify that I, my comments were not made to be critical of any any side on this issue. I just was trying to get a clear understanding of, of what I could expect going forward coming to this board as opposed to work that just will continue to happen between the TAC and our water resources manager and, and that they'll collectively come to us when they think they need some guidance is, is just kind of where I was coming from. All right. Is there any other comments? Judy, are you here to comment? Thank yes, you. I am. Judy Decker. Um, first of all, I have a comment for the attorneys. All three of them are here today. I, I see, excuse me, I have the local crud. Um, I am shocked that you would allow the board to have such an extensive discussion on this particular issue that Mr. Zadiba brought up because it is not on the agenda. That being said, I'm going to comment on it. Uh, I, I agree, Mr. Gleason, completely with you, and I agree, Mr. Page, completely with you. I, I believe you have had a great struggle these past few years to get going, and I can appreciate that, having sat on boards myself. You have gotten going, however, and now we have another group that includes one of your members, the Water District, who from a pu public perspective is trying to usurp the authority of Mr. Johnson and the TAC. You spent great time and deliberation creating the, your TAC and your PAC. And yet, their hands are tied by the Brown Act, but they're supposed to perform. That It doesn't work that way. Let them perform. Let them go forward with the person, the, the, the firm you hired, Stetson Engineer, and, and give them an opportunity to come up with what you ask them to do. Thank I think you. that's what we did, Judy. Not if you follow through with Mr. Zadiba's recommendations. That has never been discussed at the TAC. Not, not the TAC that you put together. We yes, they've asking. had, they have meetings in the morning. They are not public. It is not discussed in the, in the TAC. Nor has it ever been discussed here. As, as you pointed out, this is not an agenda item. And it's my fault. That's I, my an apologies. easy way to get rid of it. Though. However, actually, well, Madam Mayor, it is agendized under 14C. Thank you. Well, that's what I thought we were doing: is that we were accepting his report and asking them to work tack to work with Stetson. That's what we asked. Okay. Is there anything else on the TAC other than to accept their report? Okay, motion? No. Motion to receive and file? Yep. Motion to receive and file. Second. Anybody opposed? Okay, that's quicker. Okay, then the, uh, the next item was part of the direction. 
to them, and I brought it up early. My apologies. So we had given them direction to work with Stetson, the TAC to work with Stetson, yeah. and do as they could to bring resolution to the issues. And I think those issues should include uh, the long-term sustainability access for the groundwater authority towards this database if we, if we go that direction, how that's resolved. I agree, because I agree with the supervisor and Bob and everyone else who said the same thing. It's a, the issue we have to deal with. Okay. All right. So we have, we gave them advice, so that's item number, uh, whatever run, we are. We're on 10. 10, okay. <laughs> so now we are at the PAC. Uh, can I say something here? I have a chemo treatment at 1.30. We have a little more than an hour. So I'm not trying to rush anybody, and if necessary, I can ask one of these others. 45 minutes, madam. 45 minutes. Okay, go ahead. All right, just so you know. Okay, thank you. Okay, Donna. Okay. Um, in the interest of time, I'll try to shorten my report a little bit. It was included with the um, items that were sent out for this meeting, so it's available from that package. And there might be some copies up here, or I can send it to anybody who wishes to have a copy, a full copy. There is one action item, and that was um, the uh, PAC needs approval from the board for the format of the green sheet form that you asked us to, to collect all the public comments into some sort of a logbook. So we were trying to uh, develop a public comment form and we have one, I think it was included in the packet. There are some changes that will probably need to be made according to Brown Act um, compliance issues. But we do ask for approval of that so that we can have those comment forms at our meetings and on the website when we get it developed and that sort of thing. Um, under item five, we discuss the larger POAM and the separate PAC potential action schedule. And the questions that the committee members had and I think I included that for your review, too. Um, we're given, like, one date in the column to the far right. And in the larger poem, it's a range of dates. So the committee members were wanting to know, does that date mean the date we will begin or the date when, when we make our conclusions and our ending of the um, item that's listed on that schedule? And a range of times for a discussion and an expected ending or completion for the topic. Also, any linkages of topics that need to follow tech tasking. In other words, if we wanted to move something up to an earlier discussion at the PAC, are there some constraints in some of those items? And I think there were some listed in our minutes, like items 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Um, on the larger poem, that would be 24, 77, 29, 68, and 32. Um, so what is that um, decision there? And we intend to review the poem and the potential action schedules at each of our meetings. Under item six, we discuss the development of a website and we've determined that the PAC um, will work with the developer of the website. However, we don't feel like the PAC should take on the responsibility. Um, we recommended that either Kern County or Stetson engineers should set up and maintain the information sharing website. Um, we can have another item that came up for consideration was the um, Indian Wells Valley Cooperative Groundwater Management Group currently does have a website, iwvgroundwater.org, and we can bring up that item at the next cooperative meeting. It will be in February.
to see if that would be a possibility to use that website for um, Sigma related and GA information. Okay, for number seven on our agenda, John Kersey uh, from the Department of the Navy made a presentation addressing how a federal agency addresses public involvement and the process for handling public comments. Um, Ryan Klausch was scheduled also to do a presentation, but he was on assignment to the Thomas Fire and was not able to be at our meeting. Um, under item eight, we had um, thorough and lengthy discussion of background information regarding and relating to the development of the communication and engagement plan. Um, it was determined that we can do like a bullet list under each of the outline for the CNE plan that we agreed that we would use and have uh, specific bullets under each item. But perhaps the PAC might need additional assistance like from the um, communications person from Kern County or someone from um, Stetson Engineering staff that could help us um, to review the final product before we get it ready to present it to the um, board. Um, I believe that's all that's on my list. So just that one action item on the comment form. Okay, so the item then that you are asking our input on would be the next item. So right now I will ask, is there any comment on your report from the board? Okay, is there any? Go ahead. <laughs> That's debatable. I, I just I want to first say thank you to the PAC for being so conscientious and thorough on, on their work uh, and giving some of the stop this, these items um, so, such uh, deep consideration. But similar to what I said with the TAC, I, I do want to encourage them to not worry about asking our opinion on every little thing. Um, to me, um, you know, the major task that they've got in front of them, which, which uh, was part of the, la the last part of the report, is the completion of the community engagement uh, plan. Um, things like, you know, what's on a form and, and, and who, and, and starting a website to me, or something that, that falls within that plan. So, you know, I, w I wouldn't worry so much about right now getting the website up because first, to me, you got to you got to make sure you have your plan and how the website fits within that. Um, an item like how to log public comment and what should be on the form and, and how it's organized, I see that as something that our groundwater authority staff and council could assist in, in providing the final edits to that. I don't know that that's something that you need direction from this board on, you know, what what different pieces of, of information we need on that form. Um, so I just, I don't know that we, if that's the only action you're asking for, I I would deflect that to staff to work with you to finalize that form. I, I, I don't know that that's something that we need to, to add five more uh, cooks on this, um, that on that kind of minute detail of, of how you're going to log public comment. Okay, is there other board comment? Okay, go ahead. Uh, first off, I, I, I like your idea of, uh, of recycling the, uh, the, the existing website that we already have, um, which, which has already been paid for and it's functional and it has an address. So that would be a nice shortcut to start using it to uh, uh, announce, and, and that it goes directly uh, in context of uh, public involvement because <coughs> it's already there. So we could easily advertise that. And, all websites are made to be changed very easily, so and ours is easy to add to and, and subtract and all that stuff. It also has all the studies already listed, which would be a, a bonus. There are all the uh, studies have been ever, that we've databased forever. They're listed there along with the links and stuff. The other thing was is I uh, that's what I was going to ask you what uh, Bob was saying. Um, I do understand uh, it's hard to know what you're supposed to do and not to do, what you need to ask questions to do and. That's kind of, um, it slows down everybody's process. And so in the interest of fluidity, I uh, wanted to echo that, that if we could come up with some kind of a, a process where uh, the, the manager works, I mean, I know you guys go to all the meetings, 
but um, somehow it could become just a fluid between you guys, and I'm not sure. Uh, I guess we could uh, decide exactly what needs to come here, but this is a process in action with a team leader, so I, I like the idea that, that you're given the go to just get things done and talk, and I like that a lot. So any way we can add that would be totally fantastic. So thank you. Okay. Any other board comments? Okay, public comment? Joshua Nugent, uh, Mojave Pistachios and Nugent Ranches. And I just wanted to um, reiterate as far as the website goes, I know we've talked to the um, to Alan before, but um, Mojave Pistachios has $1,000 and Nugent Ranch has $500 for whatever form the work on the website looks like. If there needs to be some immediate funds out to um, get it done, we'd like to make a donation in that regard. And much more importantly, at the next PAC meeting, we're going to be providing pizza because I think it's a workshop on the outreach. So come and eat pizza on our diet. Pizza with pistachios on it, perhaps? With, with pistachios sprinkled on top. I was so. going to ask you, where's ours? <laughs> so thanks, guys. OK. Thank you. OK, being no oh, oh. done. <clears throat> the uh, suggestion of recycling the uh, IWV groundwater uh, website uh, perhaps has merit. The uh, site is presently uh, seriously defective, and the old papers are not uh, are no longer available. The, either the links are broken, or they've been removed. And the same thing is actually true of the county's website. Um, the uh, access to much of the material that was there earlier, not just in the um, water resources section that was newly built for us, but the old uh, areas uh, like the uh, uh, Kern uh, Planning Department's website that contained the uh, Todd report, it's the link is broken. So it has something, it has partly to do with the Adobe uh, file structure and it's a widespread problem in some ways, but uh, I think you should be aware that uh, things are not all uh, healthy. Okay, we can deal with those issues through our manager. Ron would be happy to do that, and Alan is coming up too. Okay. Um, we'd be happy to just send me an email, me a list of anything that's not working. Uh, we'd be happy to move the files to the uh, – my IT guy is ready to move the files, all of what we have, to, to any new website. Let's get it done. Um, I'm ready to go. So uh, I, can get a, I can get a flash drive, and you just connect us with your guy or your girl, whoever does the, the website, and we'll move, all, we'll move it all. If that's the, the board's direction, I'm good. Thank you. Bob. Yeah, I just want to add that I, I appreciate all the offers to, for food, for cost of the website, and for moving the information. When, just tell us where to put it. I, 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 <laughs> I, I, I agree. I, 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 I appreciate that enthusiasm. I just uh, the, I want to ask again and, and stress. I, I would appreciate if the if the PAC would focus that good energy on completing the community communication and engagement plan because to me where the website where, where the website is what's on it all those things have to be part of that plan so if you guys are having a workshop next meeting to, to get that I wish you the best and and look forward to seeing the product of that so that we can look at the whole picture and we can give some direction on okay do we use this existing website or not or do we you know or we do those things I, I, I really want to see that plan that's that's what I'm hoping for me too um, I will not be at the next PAC meeting, uh, but the vice chair, Steve Goddard, will be conducting the meeting. And um, I have asked one of our East Kern board members, who was designated as the alternate for myself, to attend the meeting in my place to make comments. But he, according to staff responses, will not have the power of a vote. OK, thank you. So um, I'm asking us to accept and uh, file your report or motion. I'll move that we uh, receive and file the PAC report um, and encourage them to take our discussion uh, to light and keep um, up the good work. 
there anybody opposed to that? Second. Oh, now is there anyone opposed <laughs> to it? Okay. Uh, Donna, then do you feel the direction you've gotten from, from the board here that you need a motion, or are you happy, is the board happy with the direction uh, Mrs. Thomas has been given? I just need some specific direction on the comment form, uh, especially regarding uh, whether we can require a written comment or require um, contact information for the person making the comment according to the Brown Act regulations. Keith, can you address that? Or Ron, either one of you? I would say you at least want a name and contact information would be optional, I would assume. Um, but also, I would also put uh, something on there earlier because it's written. Form? Yeah, the physical form that if they're if they need help filling it out, we offer help for them to fill it out somehow or another. I guess Keith can weigh in on the rest of it. It's not really a Brown Act. Right. You're talking about a physical form for public. That's not really a Brown Act issue. Uh, it can say whatever we want yeah. it to say. Okay. Yeah, we just wanted to have some sort of way for. Uh, the commenter to receive a response back to know that we've addressed the issue. Okay. All right. So we have that. We are on to item uh, 12. Uh, Madam Mayor, some Thir uh, 13, sorry. Yeah, Madam Mayor, some clarification on uh, staff uh, response to that. You initially said that you wanted us to reach out to the website that was broken. Are we going to do that, or are we just going to hold off and wait till the PAC comes up with their design of the web page, and then we go we from there? Until the plan's complete. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Now we are on item number 13. And, Alan, you have that. Is that correct? Well, I, there's no actual background staff report that was included in the um, the, the packet, so I will, um, with the support of my ad hoc okay. committee Thank member, um, try to take the lead on this. Um, Peter and I were, were um, delegated to serve on an ad hoc finance committee to look at some of the different options that the authority would have for generating revenue for uh, funding, um, initially for funding the um, development of the GSP document uh, so that it could be, you know, working with the community in our PAC and our TAC and, and bringing it to the board for adoption, uh, getting all the work and the studies done. Um, and we've had several meetings to discuss our options with council, uh, general council, um, regarding those different mechanisms and, and, I, and opportunities for funding. Um, as the public's aware, at the last meeting, the... Um, one of the fruits of those discussions was that the water district was gracious enough to agree to uh, assist the authority with its cash flow and advance uh, funds up to $500,000 to um, assist the authority with uh, its cash flow issue and also with the understanding that whatever financial revenue mechanism that we put into place, that that would be an advance of whatever they would eventually have to pay anyway. Um, and so what we are at the point of now of, of looking at all the information have um, um, uh, decided or, or recommending I would say that the board to the board that um, the board give direction to uh, groundwater authority staff to develop you know, I'm gonna find my notes I don't want to miss I don't want to miss something here. to uh, direct staff to develop a proposal um, for a water fee that would be based on kind of vol a volumetric fee uh, based on production um, that would be generate revenue for the creation production of the GSP um, and that this fee um, proposal would look at uh, assessing that, that volumetric fee on non-de minimis users um, and that um, once that proposal was uh, completed there would be a process of providing that for comment to our policy advisory committee. And I, I guess the, the last bit of information that I don't have on the recommendation is how long staff thinks they would need to, um, to put together that um, financing proposal. 
I think we could probably put a proposal together by next meeting. Okay. So um, I guess one of the things then to get clarification from the rest of the board, if, if they are supportive of that recommendation from the ad hoc um, finance subcommittee, is whether if they can get it done in a month, whether you want that to be brought to us first or if you want mm -hmm. their proposal to be um, reviewed first by the PAC before it's brought to us. Are you asking board direction, staff direction? Uh, I was, I, I'm looking for the board's um, preference in terms of whether they would like to see it first and then, and then give its, its feedback and then seek additional feedback from the, the PAC or whether you're willing to give it cold to the PAC first. Mm -hmm. Staff to see it. I want staff, I want staff, I guess it is. But it would come from staff, it come from to, staff. To, uh, to us or to PAC. That's what he's asking. I mean, essentially, staff's going to be developing that, that straw proposal that we'd all be, all be reviewing and, and providing input on. My opinion is that it should come back here first so we could okay. get our comments in there and then send them to PAC for their input. But I'm just one. Everybody else? Okay. They do. Yeah. So we can either give it now or we can give it in a month. That's that's what I'm getting at. I just wanted to say quickly um, that based on the time frame that it will take us to put together the proposal, I don't think we could get anything to the pack. You would be looking at four weeks for our proposal rather than right. six weeks right. if we send it to the pack first. Okay. And th and that's what I wanted to get understanding for your timing. So I appreciate that. So. I, I think it's a matter of ex expediency um, uh, and given that some of the comments from the board now that, that the recommendation would be then that it be brought back first to this board given that that's when it probably the earliest it could be ready anyway uh, to bring back that proposal to this board first at our next meeting in February. And that would be the, the recommendation and I'll make that as a motion from the, the ad hoc committee. Spell out, spell out, okay. Could yeah. you spell out one more time, please? Yeah, I'll, I'll restate that. So the, the, the recommendation, the motion from the ad hoc committee would be to direct Groundwater Authority staff to develop a, a fee proposal for the creation of the GSP that would be um, a fee based on volumetric or, or usage of water um, assessed to non-de minimis users in the basin um, and that that, I'll clarify, I didn't say this before, but the clarification is, is that when I say for the creation of the GSP is that that, whatever setup that proposal should look at, just having a timeline of that fee being in place in order to create the GSP. It's not a, an evergreen fee. Um, and to bring that back to our, that proposal to this board at our February meeting for our review and direction, and then at that point we can specifically address um, directing the PAC to review it as well. I can I have sort of a shortcut. I assume from what you're saying, uh, Water Code Section 730 provides for the kind of fee that you're describing. So I assume you want us to come back with a, a Water Code 730 fee. Is that the idea? That's my understanding of what of what we're allowed. But um, I'm open to staff's um, proposal to include additional um, belt and suspenders protection of that fee being. <coughs> Successful if, if that's what your recommendation is. Is there a board comment? I want a yes, I want a second. Sure. I thought it was seconded. I'll second it. I thought it was too. Sorry. Okay. Is there any uh, any public comment? Okay. So then a motion. Uh, Stan, are you coming up? Yes, ma'am. You can't. I've already had a motion. Stan Rotora. Uh, I'm here speaking for myself. I'm a 45-year resident of our valley. Um, at the last meeting of this group, I suggested that it was time, in fact, way past time, that we had a finance committee uh, that dealt with the finance issues associated with this committee. Um, the, the finances of this committee uh, are probably second only to the technical issues. It's going to be one of the most important things we do. We had an ad hoc 
committee set up months and months and months ago. As you heard, they've, been, they've met several times. Um, I think it's time that we took the discussions from behind closed doors and ad hoc committee to open c communication before the public. The, I think there's a misunderstanding regarding the Brown Act. Uh, the Brown Act is not intended to quash co information, communication, that kind of thing. It's not to keep people from talking together. It's intended to basically make sure that the business of the people is done in front of the people. Um, so therefore, I'm once again suggesting that rather than having all these ad hoc meetings and discussions that the public is not privy to, that we should bring it out into the light of day, form a finance committee, which is what I thought we were going to do six or eight months ago, and if we had, we'd be able to actually discuss this as part of public information. So I would urge you to get busy, form a finance committee, have finance committee meetings like the city does, uh, like the water district does, so we can actually have honest communication so we, everybody knows what's going on and there aren't any more secrets behind closed doors. Thank you. Stan, I was going to uh, discuss that item under closing comments, so go, we'll thank you for your input. Okay, uh, then the next. M Madam Chair, if I could just clarify, the way I see this is that the Finance Committee was collecting and gathering information, not making decisions behind closed doors, um, and that this recommendation is the method by which to bring the decision-making process into the public um, venue. So I, while I appreciate the recommendation that we should have a, a standing committee, the going forward, whatever proposal the staff presents in terms of how to do this fee schedule, this would be all done in the public. It's not going to be in secret. Thank you, sir. Okay. Um, so where are we? Oh, we, we have a we motion have a pending, vote. Madam Mayor. We have a vote. Okay, a vote. Um, all those in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. The next item. Who has that would be uh, general manager's report? Water. You can tell I'm trying to get done here. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, and, and I'm going to try to help or try to do it as fast as I can. Um, th there are, I'm going to hit all four of the items and then we can do whatever procedures we need to do with the board and the audience on, on, on all four. There's four items under the Water Resources Management Report. It's Prop 1 application status on Prop 1, groundwater modeling, data management system, and uh, plan of action and milestones, the poem. Uh, items B and C, the groundwater modeling and the data man management system, I think we've pretty well hit already. Um, we had a lot of discussion under the TAC, certainly with the, with the groundwater modeling. I might have one or two things to say. I think we pretty beat, up, beat to death the data management system, so I probably won't have much to say there. Um, so to start from the top, on the Prop 1 grant application, as I mentioned before, we, we tried to uh, stay in touch with the state and find out what the status is and where things are and where we're going to get some information. Um, we did have a call with them last week, and they gave us a general indication. We got some of the numbers, and then they actually had a release, which I have copies up here. It was like 30 copies up here of the DWR release of the Prop 1 funding. And it's actually pretty good news. I just, I'll just i just read the important parts of it. Uh, the release indicates that DWR has uh, $86.3 million available uh, for grant funding for Category 1, Category 2 uh, grant applications. We, we applied for both. But they had a total of $86.3 million available. Um, applications received uh, by the closing date, so the, the, the ones they're going to, going to consider. Applications received for Category 1 and Category 2 uh, only totaled 86.4. So it's only a $100,000 difference from, from the amount they have versus the applications that are in. So that's really good news. Um, as part of their um, criteria for, uh, for heading out the applications, the criteria for Category 1 is that at least $10 million will be applied to Category 1. That's the disadvantaged communities. And um, the rest, whatever's available, uh, would go to the Category 2. Um, they did receive uh, a little over $16 million in Category 1 grant applications and the remainder, 60, $69 million and change, 
for Category 2. So I guess the good news here is it looks pretty darn good for, for our, our group here to get a, get a, a sizable, if not a full grant application um, from DWR. So that's good news. And as I mentioned, the flyer, I, I have copies out, out in front here. Um, groundwater modeling, um, there was a report given. I, I think Alan gave a good report on Jean's presentation to the TAC. She did present at the TAC. <coughs> Um, I'll let you know, in case it didn't get covered, that we did get comments in on uh, her model review that she did. We got comments in. She is going to respond to those comments and distribute those back through the tax. So those will be coming out. Um, and also at the February TAC meeting, uh, we will be getting some information out ahead of the TAC meeting, probably by uh, Thursday, Friday of next week. So it'll be a goal is at least a week, try to get a week ahead of the meeting. Uh, information on water balance and... Um, the components of a water balance and even a review, we got some really good information here today from USGS, so we'll, we'll certainly have that included. But we, we'll try to get some information out to the TAC uh, by Thursday or Friday next week, so we'll have a discussion item, so we'll have something to look at when we come to the meeting, and Gene will be back, and we'll, we'll start on that stuff too. So there, that, that's going to happen at the next meeting. Uh, uh, and we already talked about the DRA battle upgrades, uh, and Commander Longbottom uh, discussed the coordination with the Navy. I think he gave a good report there. So that's it, really, on the modeling. Uh, data management system, um, I think we've got that pretty well covered. And now the POEM, what, what we've done is, you might recall when we first started to look at the POEM, when it wasn't, when we didn't have it, it was somebody else's, we put up to get, put up on the board a, uh, um, I want to say a bad word, but it's, it's it's a, it's a takeoff from it. It's not, I was going to say bastardized, but it's a takeoff from, from the poem is what it is. Um, and all it is is taking the key components and sort of laying out the general schedule off the poem. So this is not part, this is not the poem, but it's a piece of the poem. It's, it's sort of a picture of what's in the poem. And we've updated that, so that's the, the current version of it. Um, in coordination on the poem, and, and Adam is correct, we were not doing much on the poem, but our coordination... Uh, Commander Longbottom has been providing uh, you know, excellent input on the poem. He uses it all the time. This is not something we have normally used, so we've adapted to it. We, we've helped to, helped to uh, uh, take what was already done and make sure that we were familiar with that, and we're expanding it based upon comments we're receiving. We've gotten comments from Commander Longbottom right now, just so to, to report to you all, that we are currently doing on the revisions that include... Um, including a, a critical path that will show on the poem. I mean, the actual poem will probably show it here, too. It won't be as effective as you show it on the poem because it will pick up all of the critical path <coughs> items, decision-making points that we have in getting this GSP done. So critical path will be included. We're going to include quarter, quarterly expenditures so that you can get an idea on budgeting so you can see what your quarterly expenditures are, are going forward, and it will certainly be adjusted as we spend money or don't spend money. Um, those quarterly expenditures will all be included. And also, um, there was a request that we, we include a clear designation of whose responsibility it is to get certain things done. Right now, from the initial look at the poem, it looks like it's all on us. And, and, and technically, a lot of it is on us to get it done. But the reality is, there are things we can't do unless other people do what they're going to do. Um, certainly, um, the DIR model and, and, and the work that the Navy's doing, certainly decisions that we need to have made by the TAC or the board or, or input from the PAC. So we're going to clarify designations in the poem as to whose responsibility to get things done. So that is being done. Um, as I mentioned, this poem and the software for it is, is a bit new for us, and we're, we're learning how to, to work on it. Um, we, I'm told. I'm not doing it, obviously. I'm not a poem guy. Um, I'm told that we should have it ready for the next TAC meeting, and we're certainly going to send it over to Commander Longbottom as soon as we have a clean version of it, because I'd like to get input. We'd like to get input before we go to the TAC on whether or not it's meeting the, the, uh, the, uh, the request that, that you made. So we'll be working on that, too. So um, one of the items that I wanted to mention also, and that is with the, uh, the quarterly expenditures, um, you'll recall that uh, a meeting ago, or two meetings, maybe it was two, meeting, maybe it was two meetings ago, but um, in order to, uh, as part of the funding mechanism that the, that the Water District provided funding for, we worked on a six-month and a one-year and even a full, a full GSP budget based upon what was submitted on the Prop 1. So we pr produced some documents that were all consistent with the Prop 1. It was all good. It's all fine. Um, but uh, at the same time, 
um, we are we are rolling up our sleeves uh, and our team. All of our all of our folks are getting together, rolling up our sleeves and trying to get organized on what we're going to do and when. And it's becoming clear that uh, as a qualifier, when we put that original six month schedule together, um, we took information off Prop One, the Prop One application, which included expenditures for the for 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 all the work tasks that we've got to do in these these next six months. And we essentially, we had a note at the bottom, I hope you all read it, we had a note at the bottom that said that the cost had been evenly distributed throughout the six months just for purposes of, of holding a place. Well, we've had some internal coordination meetings amongst our team and there will be some revisions coming out on those expenditures and I'm sure, where's Alan? I'm sure Alan's going to want to know what those are because he's been working on the budget which he's going to talk about in a minute and it'll make a difference. And what you're going to see is some some moving around of some of the expenditures because there's certain things that we're just not going to be able to spend that much money at that time, and we're going to be loading up some stuff later. But we're going to we'll be getting that revision out. It, it may be already ready. We they were working on it yesterday, but I was out of the office. It may be already ready. But as soon as it's ready, I'll get it out to everybody to look at to see what what is a more realistic look when we've actually started assigning manpower and schedules. Uh, for what we need to get done on all these tasks. So it's a more realistic version of expenditures, which will also be very, very useful when we start looking at uh, the poem, as Commander Longbottom suggested, we look at that poem and try to get more real, as realistic as we can about expected completion dates on tasks and what the critical paths really are. That'll all play right into the critical paths too. So I guess that's my report. Thank you, sir. Let's open up for public. Any public, uh, anyone in the public wish to make comment on the Water Resource Manager Report? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing and bring it back to the board. Board members, uh, your thoughts on item 14. Yes. Commander. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just a few things. Um, so uh, one item that uh, you didn't mention was a percentage complete. Yeah, percentage, percentage complete. complete and comment on the task. Um, yeah. Sorry. Bear with me. I got a, a few things, and you know, I'm 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 going to push pretty hard here, so don't don't take it the wrong way. Sure. Um, first and foremost, we need to have this every meeting. This needs to be in the board packet before the board. The detailed version of it with your incorporated changes. We all need to have time to go through this thing prior to the meeting, so that we can ask questions and and sort out issues here. Right. Not this, but you want the The, the poem. detailed the version detailed poem. needs to be in the board packet. It needs to be updated every day. I'm exaggerating slightly, but every time we look at this thing at a board meeting, it should be different. And so I, th I just want folks to understand that the poem is not something you do and you put on the shelf. That, that poem should be updated following every TAC meeting, following every PAC meeting, following every ad hoc committee. Following every every deliverable, it, it should be updated and the timelines adjusted, the monetary amounts adjusted. So when we sit here as a board, we've got a realistic snapshot of what everything's going to cost us and when it's all going to finish. So if we can do that, that'd be awesome. For presentation purposes, yeah. uh, this is a good roll up, but I think the same things are, are missing on here. If, if I'm looking at this, I see the red line, which is where we are today. Right. And the immediate things wandering through my head are, the data management system development, what's our percent complete? Um, data compilation and analysis should have started on January 1st. Have we started it? What percent complete is it? Are we on schedule or are we behind schedule? If we're behind schedule, what's my recovery plan? All right, so if you're behind schedule, if, if you take the numerical groundwater model, for instance, according to this, yeah, we're, we should be about 55% complete. If we're only 25% complete, then what's, as the groundwater manager, what's your plan to get us to that final plan? How much more money is that going to cost this board? Do you need more time? If you need more time, how does that affect the critical path and does that delay the overall GSP? So these are what I'm really hoping we see at this meeting when we do the groundwater, or that we do the POAM development is you kind of letting out your inner bulldog and I mean really getting up here and I'm, I'm being serious in this and going, listen, item one, team, all of us, hey, we're on track, good job. Item two, hey, this is the TAC, they, they owe it by such and such a date. Item three, this is the PAC, we owe it by such and such a date. For Q1, do you have enough money to execute everything that's on here for Q1 in your hand right now? Do you? Do I have the money? Uh, um, I think the, 
Authority so, has the money. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, this is the question. I look at this as from, no from a groundwater manager. Yeah. You own this plan. You're driving this plan to get us a GSP on time. Right. So this is your plan. In order for you to be doing all of the items in here that you say need to be done in Q1, you have to have the money in hand that you need to be able to do those things, yeah. right? The, the TAC and the PAC all have to have that tasking in advance of, you know, it's all got to be coordinated so that when Q1 starts, Everyone's actually doing those actions and not just starting to talk about them. And so I, this concerns me a bit. I mean, we've been talking about I know you guys are working on it, but um, you know, we have 20 meetings left, give or take, until the GSPs do. Yeah. 20 meetings. Um, if you know, quick, rough math, that means every time we meet, 5% of that GSP needs to have been done by the last meeting. And so just, just I don't want to put you on the spot, but what percent put complete of the GSP do you think you are right now? And so the fact we don't have that answer, I, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but those are, those are the, these are the questions we need to be discussing during this POAM. Hey, based on the POAM, we should be 10% complete. Hey, we're 15% complete, we're doing well. Or we're 8% complete, we're not doing well. And so what's our recovery plan? Um, in order to execute this plan, I, I need X number of dollars. Board, I need this money. So these are the things. I, I'm, I don't mean to be harsh, but this is what we're missing with the POAM. I mean, that's kind of the down and dirty on it. Um, that's what I have. Thank you, sir. Other comments? Okay, I'll jump in. Um, I think this POAM is our roadmap to success. It is our roadmap. It is the thing that uh, that helps us make decisions. It's a management tool that helps us make decisions, help us uh, stay on top of you, helps you stay on top of the tack and the pack, and help everybody uh, move forward. It's also, I think, a very easy way for the public to look and get a snapshot of, you know, and just walk away with the saying, okay, things are going well, but things are not going well. That is the best way. And if that is up here in a way that depicts exactly what the commander said, um, I think uh, the public will be satisfied, and I think this board will be satisfied, and you will also be yeah. be satisfied. I, I'm not sure how much experience you have with with this stuff, but once you get going on it, it's pretty easy. And once you spend time, it really helps uh, move the ball down down the field. So I'm looking forward to that. I think that the majority of our meetings from now on should be spent on that. So we should have the TAC and the PAC comments be three or four minutes. And then um, this be a half an hour or 45 minutes or whatever we need to really, whatever time you need to really drive uh, your issues, your needs and wants home for us. So uh, that, that's what I'd like to see this committee steer to. So we're not talking about, you know, questions on, the, on, face, on web pages. I mean, that is not something we need to be spending time on. We need to be spending time on this. So um, I agree with the commander, and I think it's going to be really good for the public to be have a visual on seeing where we are. And 20 meetings, that's that's pretty that – I've never heard it put like that, but that's an exact true statement. Okay. Uh, public session is closed. Any other board member comments? I'm looking for a uh, vote to uh, receive and file. So moved. To second. receive and file. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Budget item, budget review, Alan Christensen, number 15. Yes, sir. It's 1.30. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Vice Chair. I will be as quick as I can. Um, you have two sheets here, um, uh, and I'm going to go quickly through the, 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 I've given most of the audience has a, a copy. The budget by objectives, that's the first page is the, um, and this is only showing a portion of it, but um, on screen, but uh, this is the budget you adopted. It's a six-month budget only. It's a uh, $743,000 appropriation. Let me say this related to what the discussion you just had. Um, much of that, be it begins in January, the month we're in. It, it is assumed uh, much of that work uh, that, that would be 
that we funding much of the the funding for the for the projects and expenditures you see there comes from grants which we have not been awarded yet so there is a I would I would urge you to understand that there is in connecting the POAM with the the money there is a limit to what you can do uh, given resources uh, we've just received money from a from the water district which is going to be great and that'll that'll speed things up um, but um, seven hundred forty three thousand dollars for six months of work is potentially six months of work uh, it is not even with the money from the water district and uh, grant reimbursements from the previous grant it's not going to be enough so uh, there are some limitations to how quickly you can go let me go into the second page which is the cash flow uh, and if the, uh, the there we go, he's cut it. He's cut it in half uh, sideways. Now, what this is is a um, a projection only, but it, it hopefully will give you an idea of, of what's going on. The challenge the uh, the challenge with with this is it's just talking about money in the bank. The budget is a is the sheet I just showed you before is a cost control mechanism it's a it's a what the government authorizes to spend this is actually a analysis of what um, is in the bank and how quickly can we spend based on what's in the bank and what we can what you know what limitations we have uh, in the very very short term so uh, what we've been doing thus far is we have used the seventy five thousand dollars that was uh, contributions made by uh, the member agencies, and we were we started paying Stetson's bills with that until we ran down to about a thousand dollars, and we stopped uh, paying. In fact, uh, I think for the one of the invoices, we paid a partial payment to them. They were good uh, Stetson. They were good to to allow that in anticipation of more money coming in later. So we stopped at a thousand, and uh, that's where the cash in the bank was as of a couple of weeks ago. Um, since that time, we received a check on Tuesday, I think. I can't remember what it was, Don, but from the Water District, it was either Tuesday or Wednesday, of $100,000. That was the initial advance from the Water District. Um, so we're, ta we're going through resources right now. Uh, we have a, uh, the, that's the second item. The third item is a $19,500 is expected to come any day now from DWR is a grant from a reimbursement. The first grant the, um, uh, draw that we made, uh, the the portion going to the Indian Wells Gra Valley Groundwater Authority to reimburse costs is that amount. Um, we expect that we'll need another seventy-seven thousand uh, dollars, seventy-seven thousand five hundred advance from the Water District to meet the expenditures below. Uh, which I'll get to. And then we have another outstanding uh, draw from the Stress Basins Grant, number two, in the amount of $22,000, uh, $22,731, $220,000. These are short-term cash needs through what estimated through February. Um, uh, this does not take into account previous invoices that we've paid, but the ones that are that are that are coming. November invoice for forty-one thousand from Stetson. I think that's a firm number. At the time that I put this together, a December invoice hadn't been given, so it may be a little higher or lower than that. Uh, but we average we, that was a round number that we averaged based on the bills thus far. Uh, USGS uh, study uh, bill number two, we received that. Uh, we had not paid that yet, um, but that, um, given given the money that just came in, the 100000 and other funds that will be coming in, we'll be able to pay that. And then some ex uh, budgeted expenditures, again, estimates for this month, the next month, 82000 and then uh, what we expect for USGS as a progress payment, 30000 uh, that's a pretty pretty limited work to be done by Step Stetson. It's not anything above and beyond what they've committed to do, but again, that uh, that is it. That is where we're at cash wise. There may be some some variation here and there, but we are confident we can make those expenditures, um, those estimated expenditures from the cash that's available. Uh, again, we do not go into the negative. The county is not uh, is not 
going to fund uh, expenditures or front the cash for expenditures. Uh, and let me let me tell you how the process goes for expenditures. So we'll get a invoice from Stetson. Uh, we'll give it to you. We'll put it on the agenda. You saw one today. We don't pay that until we don't even cut the check until you approve it. And uh, if you approve it, if we have money in the bank, we pay it. If not, if we have partial money, we, we pay a partial payment. If we have no money, we tell Steve, uh, we're going to wait until the money starts coming in. So that's our process. Now with the cash that's come in, uh, we have more flexibility and ability to pay uh, those expenses as they occur. Um, this will completely change once a grant is, um, is obtained. But the challenge is, and probably what you're, maybe what you're sensing is, that there's a tail to these expenditures. Um, we need cash to, front, to, to pay bills to get reimbursed later by the grant. That we have a grant that we have existing, a grant that's coming, um, but we need cash uh, to, uh, to make those payments and then get reimbursed later. Um, when the grant funds come, we assume they'll come from DWR for the big $1.5 million grant, which we assume will get funded for some amount. Uh, we will begin paying back the water district for the money that we funded, that they have fronted uh, for us to, to, to pay these bills. So I know this is, uh, this is not probably sexy stuff, but that's, that's the essence of the, the cash flow. Um, I plan on doing uh, a, a report monthly, maybe not a verbal, but we're going to try to give you some more information monthly. So I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. Okay, I do. Uh, what's the timeline of Prop 1 funding? Um, Steve said indicated February. Early, early February. We're supposed to hear early February. I, I yeah. heard a rumor that they're not going to get to it till March. Thank Holy you. Moly. And yes, and not surprised by that. That's just the way it goes. Thank you very much. Alan, if you grab a seat right there, because you may be called up again. Let's open the public hearing. Anybody in the public wishing to make comment on item number 15? Take your time and hurry up. Can we get back to the slide one? I have some questions. Ron Kosinski, incidentally, is my name. Yes. I have some questions there. Fund balance carryover. As of 11-15 last year, that amount was for just over $40,000. How did it increase to 50? I'll answer all my, ask my questions first, and I'll sit down. Indian Wells Valley Water District advance. I thought it was $500,000. How did it get to 425,892? Proposition one grant. I'm assuming, maybe wrong, that that's the stress grant, the one that's paying for the recharge study. Wasn't the total grant $250,000? So what is that, and why is it two sixty-seven? dollars So those are my questions. Thank you, sir. We'll get to them. Good questions. Hopefully your head doesn't spin from this. Um, fund balance carryover. Um, it might have, it was probably, I don't, I don't know the reference you're talking about, but I'm assuming you're right. The, the, the challenge is that the, the fund balance will change because we're getting reimbursements from, from the first grant. So we were using cash from, from the contributions, and, and we may have stated that we had 40000 It might have been an estimate. But since that time, we knew that we were, we, we assumed that in 18 we would get some reimbursements. So that's probably the reason why. I, I can't tell you exactly why. Um, the amounts for the water district, the advance from the water district, and the Prop 1 grant were only to balance the budget. We expected much, much more dollars coming in. But if you look at the bottom line, you know, I, I typically, when I do budgets, I just, I, I, when we have a six-month expenditure, I just say, well, we're going to, this is the amount we'll need from that source, not the amount we expect to come in. Because this was a six-month uh, budget, we, we knew we were going to come back in six months, uh, redo this whole thing based on all the grants that came in. So this was a very, very short-term budget. It's an odd way to do it because of the uncertainty of the grants. But we j we, for presentation purposes, we, we just put those amounts. We knew we'd get 500000 from the Water District. We knew we'd get, we hoped we got one, much, much more from the Prop 1 grant. Does that help? Well, 
I can't. I'm gonna have to get back to you on that one. It may be. I'll just have to get back to you. It may be a mixture of the Prop One grant because they they both they may have been mixed together. So let me let me get back to you on that. Can you please info uh, the chairman of this board, Ms. Breeden, on that response so she gets aware of Absolutely. the question and uh, the answer. Good. Okay. Any other comments from the public on the budget? Seeing none, we're going to close it, bring it back to the board for comment, consideration, and discussion. Go for it. Yeah, I just was hoping Alan could clarify something for me regarding the Stressed Counties grant, uh, which is also a Prop 1 grant. Um, that's a grant was awarded to the county. It was. The, the work product is something that we're doing for this authority. So just in terms of the cash flow that you laid out, um, is there another step in there that you didn't mention? I mean, is the county actually having to cut a check so it gets reimbursed from the 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 grant or are you able to transfer that payment to show the state well the authority paid it and that's that should be reimbursable um the the yeah the it would be a, a county check yes this is exactly right and so that would be the source of reimbursement documentation that yes okay yeah, yeah. which is because our our finances for this authority are being managed by the county exactly so it's in the county's accounts okay that that makes sense to me um the other uh, point I wanted to make was um, your document indicates adopted budget. Um, uh, I know you weren't present at the last meeting, but the actual rec the actual um, motion that was made was to receive. Okay, they didn't adopt it. They did not adopt. The board did not adopt the budget. So you okay. might want to agendize for our meeting next month an adoption of the budget. You know what happens when we assume, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Page. Any other comments? Okay, I'm looking for a motion on uh, item number 15. Just a report. Yeah, Bob. Um, move to uh, receive and file. Look for a second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Nobody's opposed. Item number 16, general manager comment. Our new general manager. Welcome aboard, Ron. Yeah, I have no report at this time. Outstanding. You're going to do your <laughs> excel at that job. <laughs> going to keep you around. Right. Uh, another report. We'll go to item number 17, closing comments. Anybody? On the board. Uh, Supervisor Kingsley extends his uh, regrets for not uh, being able to attend today. He's in Sacramento oh. at another meeting. Okay. Uh, he said, could you talk into the microphone, please? Sure. Can you hear? Uh, Supervisor Kingsley extends his regrets for not being able to attend today's meeting. Thank you, sir. Any other comments? Mr. Page. Yeah, just, I, I know this is early because the, the first release of the governor's budget is not necessarily what it's going to look like when it gets adopted, but um, wanted to make sure that staff was aware and looks into the money that's included in that um, related to um, GSP um, development. I, my, it's my understanding that as a result of a legislation called SB5 that there was additional funding for for GSP development and for GSAs. So um, if staff could look into that because we want to go after every pot of money that's out there. Right. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. I noticed that too. Okay, I've got a couple of closing comments real quick. First, a sincere thank you to the Water District for um, the, I don't know what you want to call it, the cash advance, the cash loan, whatever we call that. Uh, Thank you to the Water District for helping us out, keeping our cash flow. Um, it's great to be partners with you, and I'm sure with you we're going to have uh, we're going to be successful. Last thing is the uh, finance committee that uh, somebody brought up, Mr. Retor brought up. Uh, the the uh, chairman chairwoman asked me to relay the fact that she thinks it's right now. She likes the idea in general. Uh, she wants to have more conversation about it. She thinks it's premature now to form a uh, budget committee because we don't know the monies, we don't know where it's, where it's going yet, and um, she's confident that we'll have an opportunity down the road to, uh, if necessary, to uh, select a budget committee. Or at least have a conversation about it, and we'll see where it goes. Uh, okay, that's all for that. Uh, date and time for the next meeting is February 15th, 2018, 10 o'clock, and I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. So moved. We're done. <laughs>